MVP from this team in every single map. It was Nas were on the raise, stepping up on split. Then it was Shy having an excellent Haven. And Mazzino even making a rally back to be their top yeah. performer on Bind. Every single one of these players, I think he's really getting that mental boost from the team's improvement as a whole and really funneling that into massive increases in individual performance as well. Yeah, and I, I honestly don't care what Shy's stats say overall. That guy has had an incredible tournament so far. His impact on all of these maps that I watched Leviathan win is so crazy. Just anchoring the split. Yo! You see it there on Haven. What's up, Faith? Lotus clips come to my head as well. Like, this guy is having such a good event right now for yeah. them. And he's not even, like, the aggressor on a lot of these strats. He plays every situation just we got the garys well and then you know when you talk about matchups as well right I and mean, you have all these players every player i think matches up against each other in this matchup relatively well but i, I think a lot of us are very excited about and that's why we brought mimi back because we want to talk about her favorite subject duelist matchups that's right because kesnet versus takalia forced at facing off against one another today here it feels like mimi taco is can't lose to argentina again good luck good luck tom from brazil it, this should be a block Buster match. The Taco has been improving these last few games with Leviathan, but really I think the star of this tournament thus far has been Kesdit. Yeah. Crew versus in the regular season, we're putting him on Jet a lot, putting him on under a lot of pressure as really the solo star of the team. Here in LCQ, they've really prioritized getting him on raise maps, playing a lot of chamber to free him up in that jet roll. And by extension, he has been popping up so much as an individual. I think as well, beyond just his individual. Oh, I forgot the TFT rank is on stream. With him on the raise, the way they integrate his utility. Did you impress with my counting coordination? Did you ever really do it without? Because so I'm not counting the one where I fucking trolls you guys. Because I trolled it. Yeah, and not only that, Did you do it without that? Like Kesnet on your team, who's consistently performing at the top, makes all of his teammates kind of get yeah. sigh of relief. The support players, the IGL, everyone knows that you can trust him to get the openers. You did it right after? Oh, I missed it. And it kind of eases your mind to just do your job. Especially me as a player, when I know my teammates are performing at, you know, top caliber, yeah. I'm just chilling. Let me call. Let me do my thing. I don't have to do anything more, right? Yeah. So these guys are at ease of mind going. I mean, it only counts if I set a challenge for counting, though. Mental because part of the challenge is when everyone knows it's a challenge. And so the trolls come out, and you have to, like, persevere through the trolls. That's huge. That is huge, and that's something we missed out of Leviathan. Kesnet Anyone can count to 20 with no like trolls. Like he's that type of duelist where he can just take the gloves off, yeah. drop the strats, just let Kesnet pick into a site, and if they can't stop it, we just you keep know? doing it. And they have that in their playbook to play scrappy and loose. I don't even think Leviathan got to the structure crew the first time they played in the upper bracket because True. they couldn't stop Kesnet in that series. You know, that's what they have to really focus on today. Yeah, and you know, we could talk about this matchup all day, honestly, because it's an exciting one and one that we certainly did not expect. But coaches Adam as well as Coach Owner are standing by for our match. He's just like, ah, it so doesn't we'll count. See where we're going. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not sure I want to hey, validate we'll such to a CT LCQ map pick bands. We're in the grand finals with Pyrrhic cool victory. Two, you guys are coming from winners bracket, so you'll have but the there was no challenge set forth we'll at the time. You guys are team A, which means Lev is team B. You just did it of your own volition. Okay, Unprompted. Band one is fracture. And band two is Haven. Okay, crew with oh, I like Fracture. Splits. And Lev, what side on split? Defense. Defense. Okay, for map I was having nightmares one. all night about a Sage triple colliding me showers. I don't know about you guys. Pearl. And crew, what side on Pearl? Defense. Okay, for map three from crew. Ascent and love outside on Ascent. You know, we got shit on in Premier last night. Okay, and Matt There's Fox like no sugarcoating it. They were the better team. Okay, like that round was unfortunate, but that team was like, they actually had hella bind prep. I was struggling to find good calls against that team. Like we needed, we needed more in our playbook in order to call against that team like we need more okay, we'll dry runs again. and whatnot that with team was bands, well prepared and haven. It's unfortunate so map one is split with lev on defense map two is pearl with crew on defense map three is ascent with lev on defense map four is Lotus i wonder if it's like a uni team or something 
and map five is bind with love on defense. All right, guys, good luck, have fun. I think those first the premier team forgot to sign us up. Oh, that sucks. Really does give an advantage to crew in this one. I think especially them getting split, which they dominated Leviathan on um, last time, early in this one, as well as getting um, their split. In yeah, the solo queue tactic of just exploit the issue in their hold doesn't work. Yeah, not only when that, the enemy's uh, playing uh, like super by the book the you have to uh, test them with more creative third, shit a, uh, we didn't really have more creative shit in our arsenal and so we were just out here hecking geek triple collided showers Really good strategy out of crew, and I think they have a big advantage going into this. I agree completely. I love the fact that they're starting attack. On These definitely are bad. We were expecting, um, like group stages last time around. We just cruise, you know, like we're playing five duelists, just cruising. Yeah, so we're planning on prepping for like tournament. But hey, it looks like we might not qualify if we're not bringing some stronger game. We'll see. We're basically taking the L on bind. We'll like try tonight as well, but. I don't see it ending here. Ooh. Three, three, two. Ooh, Last minute prepping bind playbook. Right, kind of well, troll. See how this one shakes for one game. Two teams have one last chance to turn their season around and make a run at a global do, 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 title. Do, do, it's do, Crew do, versus do. Leviathan. Best of five. The VCT America's last chance qualifier grand final and El Plastico starts right now. Well, it doesn't start right now, Riot. Let's be serious. Like, we have to wait another 10 minutes. I didn't even realize I was too widening. The goal this year is to be able to. Oh, the stack felt weird. The pressure is on. Let's go! Okay, that's it. Okay, and I'm level. You're on that croupium? I want crew to win. I want crew to win. And like Tom from Brazil is here and wants crew to win. Crew winning is just so insane when you think about it. Like they went 0 and 9. You know? It would basically set precedent that you can never count like a team out. You know? I can't fit it in there. Top. Anyone can take any game off one another. Like it's one thing to say you can't count them out, but it's another thing to say it's been done. I don't know. That's how I see it. What's up, Tom? Oh, wait, 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 Oh my god, I wish I could do this faster. Like, I'm still working on the visualization of this type of, like, D-spin. It's really satisfying when you, like, when you see it. Ew. Riot Games Arena es hora de dar inicio a la gran final de este Last Chance Qualifier con cuatro victorias consecutivas y en busca de la más importante. Esos son Davis, Naxet, yeah, like Mercer, this. Kenny, They're catering to Tom from Brazil right now. 
This is very fitting, giving the matchup. Do you guys remember when Tom from Brazil shot called back boat and I said that they're the better region and they're going to win? Look, it's coming to fruition, dude. It's coming to fruition. All right, what do you do? Even their gold players being shot call on eco round. You probably just lose, right? Ooh, this is ugly. Actually. Okay, I don't have the appropriate piece coming up, which kind of sucks. Like, because this was almost really cool. Oh, I did it backwards, dude. What the hell? if you fail in zen i think the level just resets but how the hell would you fail in zen i think you have to be really really bad at tetris like i don't think it's possible for me to fail in zen i'm not gonna lie at champions los angeles you have crew esports a team that is ambitious a team you have to be really bad to fail we have seen in this game okay history. i'm looking for a and pink piece confident hungry Leviathan purple piece that is ready to quell the fire that crew have lit up here mimi this is the i'm having visions i'm having visions to see in this sport it absolutely is at the start of alaric crew was always the latin american squad on top this team was dominant but the last time these two teams faced oh up, yeah on land it was that first swap over leviathan beat them made it to the international event and from then on out through all of 2022 they were the top after a brutal season for crew and a revival here in the lc oh they're on the question is if they can take that so i mean it turns out that leviathan sigma grind set was effective in yesterday's series i'm so sad i missed that comeback like a reverse sweep dude and then we're gonna have the double duelist on the other side with Taco and Nosworth. I also apologize so in advance to people tuning in. The watch party will not be lasting the entirety of the series. And if you're looking for a comprehensive watch party experience, this is not the place for this series because premiere is in three hours. And this series will still be going on in three hours, unfortunately. Insane performance, unless perfect nade timing some miracle so occurs because he's been playing the other agent, so he has his utility down to a T. So excited to see this matchup! I think both teams are hungry. So, they don't if you don't like it, take it up with Riot Games, okay? And that's the best part about this, right? It's like there's no like, I don't think that it sucks for like Sean, too, you know? Like, Sean's there, two teams. so he quite literally can't play Premier. Which, when you think about the state, what the hell, for both of these players and, and, and for both these teams, and Valum, you can attest to this. You literally went through this just the other, you know, the other day at Ascension. <laughs> yeah. That, that has to be a feeling that is really, really Doesn't that kind of suck? But also exciting to embrace. Premier's yeah, really I mean, fun. I would say it's really the same feeling. Your excitement and your nervousness is the same feeling. So it's as your. I guess it's he like could try to squeeze in two games on Thursday. You have to channel it into the game and have fun at the end of the day. The crowd's That's gonna probably what I should have tried to do, except my team. We had scheduling issues for that. No, no difference here. We see now. I don't know. In the double duelist, and this is where I think our main character is. is Maybe I'm just the dumb one. I'm not gonna lie. Because in hindsight, you could have just played all of them. I think this Thursday. It's scheduled around that is like the win con for the watch party, and I didn't. So that's sort of my bad. 
I think we're gonna remember. We this think for a about long time. it. It will be the one to remember, and it's this unique composition as well. Putting Kesdit on that race that he's been so good at frees up Davies to be on the chamber, who he himself has had an exceptional run thus far. All these guys are so familiar. Oh, wow, well, you guys are betting like nothing. Across rosters, owner has coached nine out. You just avoid all responsibility guys. if you blame Riot. There, but Not my MO. One of them can be that top flat tam team and make the final spot at champions. Let's click some cookies. Well, this is it, Riot Games Arena. I need you to make some damn noise as we get ready said play. for this grand final. It's crew, it's Leviathan, and let's send it to two awesome casters, Brent and Sideshow. Wow, I got, I've got a cookie frenzy. I was wondering I was Guys, making so much. On the, way here. the grand finals of LCQ to pass the champions, Josh. I want a way to set things up as well. Is that battle for the last I think it's kind of goofy of them to remind you to back up when it's saving the local storage. To represent your region in the biggest tournament of the year. And it's I feel like this is the cop out from Cookie Clicker. They put this here in case their tech breaks or whatever. Like this. When they're like, we told out, you. During the regular season, crew zero and nine. But Leviathan two, what a fall for from grace this squad everybody was high on them at the beginning of the year everyone knew they were capable of something like this but they just couldn't put it together when it mattered well here it matters the most you win this match you are through to champions you get to represent latam on the big stage and for the latam fans oh my god we're going in dude Absolutely. we're actually just going in same time only one can go through close prediction and this is such an exciting matchup the form that crew has been in, it's been fiery passion versus the cold iron, the discipline of Lev. And here we get started. Split is our first map here. The pistol round. And it's an attempt from crew to take things very slowly. Davies, though, turns the pace up as soon as Taco spots him. Yeah, that's confidence. Rendezvous placed up. Get out of jail for free card and out. He helped out with the rest of his team. Three shots being sent straight through the wall, hoping for an easy kill. Tackle almost going down. Has to back away for a heal. Remember, Noswell was unbelievably good last time Leviathan played on this map. One of the big reasons why they were able to pull through. And they're going for a wraparound through mid. Ooh, Max they're taking mid control in like a new Max way, dude. Of a, I mean, it's still part of the two-step plan, but they're doing it through ropes. Deep in mid. And crew, we've seen them go for this kind of pathing before where they take a heaven control and then pressure into B. Oh, and King could be in trouble. One snake bite to his name, has to back out. Just hopping around and he does escape. They didn't leave anybody posted up in a heaven. So while they go back here, they've got to be a little diligent, worried that Taco's Okay, mid control established. Step two, but the win the round. I see they've decided to go back now that they have mid control. They just go. The final 30 seconds. Yeah, and now it's just like they're playing an A retake, but Leviathan has to defend on site. Like, it's actually really good for crew. Perfect. That round is actually insane from crew. I'm not going to lie. Like, they actually played that perfectly. Massive player advantage, but everybody grouped up towards the side, and Noswa trying to take matters into his own hands, risks. Well, okay really so essentially on split the way you think about step two i'll break it down for you we'll go one step fine. deeper after this round is over i'm going to give you the the problem is pen flash is going to really hate this because it actually is reliant on the raise not being dumb like it's actually all in the raises hands at the high elo okay so essentially on this map a lot of the time I'll be VOD reviewing a raise player and you'll hear me tell them to hold their nade for the retake because um, you don't need to deny like a default plant because uh, the retake is so good on this map. So once you've established mid control, the idea is you want to hit B or A depending on which one has more like defenders in this area and less likely to have support from this area and heaven fast so there they hit a as if it's an a retake almost and they've got the raise utility which is so strong for the retakes on this map but also the sight hits when you have heaven control essentially so that's why you take mid they take mid to try and establish heaven control so that way when they take sight they can take from heaven storyline that would be of course the game is not that simple they're not going to do that every round round win that's the general idea of those types of rounds why why it's played that way for main it is close to default but at this point lev the discipline they show most likely just going to be going down that's why a lot of the time you're going to see raise hold nade on attack economical damage but i hate that because it's all in raise's hands it's literally all on raise 
like on the B hit, the raise has to nade back site and she's got a satchel pillar. And if she does that poorly, you lose. You're too low elo to realize how annoying it is to have a bad raise pen flash, but look, when you pop a bad raise player in a mortal and they're your only duelist on this map. There was a lot of talk about how close they were at being able to secure wins. You can cry. Season, but close really doesn't do anything. Zero and nine. This and there's nothing you can do about it either. It's not like I can just pick Rays. I'm bad at her too, you know? It's just final, you accept your fate. Talking about. I really do feel like this is anybody's game up for grabs by either of these squads. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see our first clash of the rifles in this round where it's, it, it is. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The banana's too big. Two phantoms, two vandals, and I should give mods like remote here. control of the so, banana. Essentially, just our first gun. Did you imagine? Money is flourishing from the prior round. So I also need to train an AI that speaks like me, and then I'm gonna give mods remote control of the stream. And at some point in like 2030, I'll never even be on the stream ever again, and you won't even know it. Get out of there. And as to what Sean was talking about on the desk earlier, notice how the flash from Shy does connect onto Melza. And so Leviathan don't know how many players are outside A, even though it's Melza controlling A, Nags controlling B, and that triple pack with Davies and Kesnit taking the brunt of the map control. This system has really worked well for them. Every All time there's a kill, the banana gets 0.01% bigger. Yeah, let's teach these viewers about compound interest. You're in the jump spot. Things that out for his team, mid control taken as well. Melza deliberately getting flashed again. Here. And now he moves away from A main. This looks like it's going to end in a B split. But remember, Shy just got confirmation that there were people outside A main. So he's got to stay towards A. And now Lev have three players over there. And here it is, a face I was kick. thinking about on occasion, like what if a raffle winner just gets lucky and they rolled the hecking Wuhujin X additional three, coach power hour Six. session? Where every now and then, like once a week at an undisclosed time, so you don't like avoid the raffles. I've got a special guest who helps with one VOD review. To make the difficult task, difficult decision, maybe not for them, but to save. We know they're prone to it. They definitely are. Yeah, I mean, that'd be really funny. Like you're this week's lucky winner. Today's special guest is the guard trend. One of the ways which <laughs> demonstrated. Everyone else is like, what the fuck? But he's he's a chamber player. Sure it's a chamber VOD. Wujin, it's not fair. Pick me. I've got a Sova VOD. <laughs> you know, a few rifles in there. And Kesnit's found one of them. So now only two vandals looking to be brought into the next. And while all of this is going on, Cruise Economy grows bigger and bigger. These players Pavel, I did not fix three tier three jail. Why are you so? Bonus, all, you're like so magnetized to tier three jail, Pavel. Already looking like it's going to be flourishing. Yeah, and we're only into round four. Bank is booming. Be giving out loans at this rate. They put so much stress on Leviathan on their defense side. We talk about form with these teams. It is an important talking point as well on the other side of things Lev have come into yeah i feel like he's a plant well, maybe paul's got two accounts he's playing so far, both sides series, like Paco, finding new is your favorite thing when you weren't tier three ah okay pavel you need to remind me between games i will open the code for robo nana and fix it and this is a winnable map for either team straight off the bat this isn't one that's supposed to be one-sided one way or another Lev or Crew both have their chances to win on split. Although, obviously, Crew in the driver's seat at the moment. Like this decision making. Deep B main control. Give it over to Mazzino. As long as he holds that space, he's going to be granting them a lot of information. Today feels slander y. Push players into what? The as well, short of the defensive towards mid, towards A. What's that even mean? Trailblazer needs to be dealt with, it is. Nobody was following up behind it. Creating a self fulfilling prophecy right now, Lily. Got a judge on Mazzino. And usually, Melzer is going to try and take that space on his own. Remember? Shivy, they the prime. One, that's the idea for crew. There. So if Mazzino just holds his ground, there is a big chance that Melzer is dropped with the spike. Recall smoke. That's King. Relieving that pressure as well. Right from behind, a bit of a backstab attempt. Mazzino still there. The judge does not do the work. Doesn't take out the opposition. What an incredibly important Here. fight. That could have been, been the whole Grenade. round for crew. It can be main control, but still, it looks like left. crew want nothing to do with it again. Tough. They use their the play, early nade. The rotations out all the way through spawn. There's only one player really anchoring, and he can hear the footsteps. Davies, does he win this fight out? King! How's he managing that? Traded, though. 
No nade here is kind of rough. Oh, he's flat. But he falls. Could have been everything if he stopped it. But Spike doesn't look like there's a chance. But it's going to be denied. Mel's is there. Getting the plants off. Extension towards it. I think they were willing to use the nade there because um, Leviathan also burned their nade. So it's like, okay, we're trading. There's no nade for re retakes, so there's no nade for the hit. Like, we'll deal. And so many things going their way. Even despite the best efforts of King, challenging them over in B heaven and then in A Also, full well, disclaimer, a lot of the stuff I explain, these players don't actually think about. Um, some of them are like explicitly defined win conditions for the map that they are consciously aware of. But a lot of these patterns are just patterns, like things that I've noticed that the players aren't necessarily consciously aware exist. They just play that way. I want to make that disclaimer. This has now hurt the Leviathan economy. They were able to buy in the prior with only one player having a judge, but now Dante Stinger. Like, I point out a lot of the time Raze holds Nate for the hit, but it's more like they just feel like that's right. You know? Miraculous stuff occur with those guns in the past. I doubt that Raze holding Nate on attack is a defined win condition for the team. It's more likely that they've defined mid control as one of their win conditions into heaven into a hit. Like, the general macro is defined, and then the players are given a lot of agency. Yeah, exactly. Jing just does stuff, right? So, like, Coaching a player of that caliber is so different. Um, because when you coach Jing, you essentially just talk macro, you talk like map specific things. You'd be like, it's good to take truck control here, and then you leave how to take that control up to Jing because he's actually so good and has such good intuition. And he'll like theory craft it on his own that he'll come up with better ways to take truck control than I would because he's the one trick, he's the specialist. And where do you guys? I come up with better plans, so I suggest stuff. Oh my goodness. But that's my pro analysis. It seems like I'm just learning everything. It's because I'm just paying attention to their micro. We rarely look at their macro because, I mean, half the time we don't even see their mini map. That was insane. How does he get this one? Like, wh where's. Does he see that guy? One sec, one sec, one sec. Casters are like. The thing is, the, the video. Okay, he sees him. He sees him. There's feet here. You must understand these players are playing in 360 FPS, okay? We're watching in 60 FPS. So we might only see that feat for one frame, but it's possible that Taco saw it for nine frames or more. So it was not a random shot. I was clearly like I was suspicious when the caster said that he just randomly shot. That's why I looked. It did not look random. I think Lever doing a great job here at just challenging. You comprehend it would be like like at 360 hertz. If you're at 144 or higher, it doesn't matter. I can tell you that completely transparently. I would basically hit the same exact rank if I set my monitor to be locked at 144. It's more about it just feels a bit nicer. You can notice it, but it's not a huge competitive advantage. It feels nicer, yep. I like, if you're below, like if you're 60 or lower, you need to, it should be your number one priority. Like the first thing you fix. You honestly shouldn't be playing tactical shooters nowadays on 60 FPS or lower. Like way back in the day, it was fine because everyone was on it, but it was just so... I don't buy these like Trent played screams on 60 FPS things. I don't believe I don't believe that because it's so noticeable. I mean, Taco had knives at a much earlier point in that round, and I wondered if he was going to pop them. He had updrafts to work with. He could have gone for a denial onto the spike. Like for people who have a, who haven't seen 144 hertz, I don't know. It's kind of like saying he played scrims with a a mouse that weighed three pounds and he didn't notice. Like how wouldn't you notice that? Of course you'd notice. 
Maybe a bit of the stress getting to him. Yeah. You hit a mortal on six years, I think. Yeah, you, it's totally possible. It's just pointless. Barry Bonds would probably make the minor leagues with a hecking baseball bat that's half as wide. Who cares, though? Making that statement is so pointless. Saying, oh, but I can hit this rank on 60, it doesn't matter, dude. It's such a detriment. I would argue the that we saw in the upper bracket when they got knocked down by Crew the previous time that he matched up, the El Clasico matchup that we've witnessed. Uh, we saw almost just a I upgrade is a lot of different stuff like 60 again. I appreciate that. Like if you're talking in chat right now and you've paid for a tier three and you have a 60 hertz monitor, cancel your tier three, set aside $25 a month until you can buy a 144 hertz monitor. Do not give me your money because you are not in a financial position where you should be giving me your money. Every single person typing in chat right now should easily be able to expense a heckin' $200 monitor. We've seen that all year with if you're paying me 25 a month, that's so much money. It's so expensive. No one believed in them, and when they became the favorites, absolutely. We'll see whether that has an impact on. Resolution matters. It just hurts. Um, for competitive esports, resolution doesn't matter at all. Uh, above like a certain amount. Like a lot of these players are playing on lower resolutions just because they it feels better to them. A refresh rate is king, and um, of course the actual input latency of the panel is incredibly important there's a 1080p 240 hertz view sonic on amazon for like 200 bucks that's the one you want to get it's got really low input latency it's like super good like if you're on a budget and nags looking to control the reaction on the other side goodness me Yo, GQ, that guy. Thanks for the tier three. Yeah, the inverse is also true. If you easily have enough money to just buy a monitor on a whim and you like my content, I appreciate if you'd support me offering free coaching to everybody else for just 25 bucks a month. Push something out towards eight. They know there's only one player there, but Nags is holding. I'm so hyped to announce that my, my coaching is getting cheaper. A main that didn't at 1500 subs i is so hyped a bit of false information because the rest of the crew i don't know something about the whole system working is making me giddy because when i first thought of it when i was really small i had a lot of like doubters being like huge you have to like charge like it doesn't work if you just make it free people will be greedy and they won't support you and i'm like i don't think so dude i think it does work out in the open again time is running so damn short it's 12 seconds shy could be an absolute miracle worker doesn't win it with a wider face it's melza should he get down King. what range with the judge Bro just took a 50 meter fight with Judge. It wouldn't if you didn't target a mature audience, Imo. Yeah, but I did. <laughs> that was part of my initial business strategy. I did three so I could not be silenced to not be free coaching. <laughs> and that, Brent, is one of the most ridiculous things it's lit. in terms of how this run has been working for crew. You know, it's not that I was like, kill? I never actually planned to pay people for the coaching. That was just a hecking goofy idea I came up with later when I was like, I'm making too much money. There's no reason I shouldn't share this with my viewers. But I originally just thought free made a lot of sense because you're like pointlessly selecting only your like wealthy viewers can get coached it's just it feels so classist gotta go for plays like this but this is just looking like crew cementing themselves josh even further yeah they're gonna let me a ton gonna try and go for this but double stingers in hand not with the result but there's no point committing the showstopper you tier three out of respect for the sense of humor that goes into the once monthly deep fried youtube video yo i appreciate that i pay him a lot so that's my I grew up with him, the person who makes the meme videos. Uh, we'll just call him Mike. It's not his name. And we share like a sense of humor. And dude, it is like our dream to post those types of videos and actually get views. Like we've been making meme videos like that since like forever ago. And now, like it started with, I pay him like 200 bucks, which was already a lot. And we're like, oh my God, I'm paying you money and you get to make these. And we're like, it's lit. Now I'm paying him, I'm paying him like over a thousand dollars per meme video. Those things have budget. Like, oh my God.
Klaus is three and one in first kills to first deaths. Yeah, exactly the same as Kesnit. So these these opening duels are happening everywhere. If you told me the numbers that Klaus is putting up here now compared to the regular season, I mean, I'd assume someone else is playing on his PC. <laughs> me, <laughs> Mike puts out slappers. <laughs> it's like a different player. I agree. The videos are art. I don't. I don't even see it as an expense. I see it as an investment, dude. My favorite part about those meme videos. This is my favorite um, stat. They lose me subscribers. So, on average, people who watch the meme video get upset and think the content is like immature or whatever. Like, how could my coach do this? And I am so glad that those hecking people are not here i do not want people with that lack of humor showing up to stream it's like dude i swear those videos like make permanent fans too like some people see those meme videos like holy shit he's so cringe he's literally perfect it was like i lose viewers that weren't really mega fans and I create like mega fans with the MLG videos. I think it's win-win. It's the great filter. And good round from Lev, but seven already? One duelist? Finally, we see Lev getting online a little bit. It's gotta be more than King though. It's gotta be more than King. He's got three times. Resub but no screen. As the next highest player on the scoreboard for I wonder story of the regular season. Exactly. I wonder why. I don't think I have him hidden. No idea. Shit is buggy because Discord doesn't have an official API for this thing. It's a good start though. Time to keep this one moving. Exactly odd still. I feel like that type of experience is what i'm aiming for with the meme videos where you like realize that like, i'm very strict during the vod review streams i can get almost too strict at times like i watch my own streams back and i'm like i honestly shouldn't have timed that guy out for that long like <laughs> but sometimes i get heckin mad and like i don't know i think the meme videos help keep it grounded where you realize like i'm actually just a goofball but i'm really serious during the vod reviews like but it's it's slow and cautious from crew again. Now that Davies is here on this angle, such a gorgeous sky utility. These people deserve the timeout. Eh, sometimes I shouldn't be handing out a week to people. <laughs> That's the one thing I've been trying to dial back on is the week timeouts. Like the week long ones is a, honestly, that shit is, I should never click that one. <laughs> like a week timeout at that point, I should just be banning the dude. He will fall. Pull right at his feet, show stop it lands. Kesnit, so consistent with it, but he's got shy there. Back up right behind. People are giving you their hard earned negative $25 for the pod reviews. <laughs> oh my. Everything left down to Melzer in a 1v3. Yeah, I think the week long ones I'm just trying to avoid doing, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, dude, I swear I see red. It's like. You know when you'll tell yourself before you play Valorant, yo, I'm going to have good comms. I'm going to have positive energy for three games today. I'm going to do it. And then you go down 0-5 and you're tilted and you don't calm for the whole day. It's like, dude, the brain is fucking funny like that. Like no amount of willpower can, can save you when the brain enters that state. Didn't have to call me out like that, goddamn. Dude, no, I'm relating. I'm literally being relatable right now. Like, watch my hecking premiere game they're yesterday. They're that was me. I was tilted. Not just competing I couldn't find good comms. Not just comms. A spot on a, on a roster in partnerships, but actually fighting to get into the tournament that means the most at the end of the year. It's been a while since we've seen these two teams at any form of international events. Yeah, exactly. So uh, my current, like, logic is if I'm really going to time somebody out for a week, it should just be a ban. Like, what's the point? Because the weak timeouts are always going to get appealed because it's like too long. It's actually too long. I feel like one of the big adjustments that Leviathan have made is saving their utility for the first kind of 40 seconds of the round. They know that crew are not going for big five person pop hits at the start. That means you don't need to throw as much early utility. But you've got to make sure that they don't contact into you. And crew are taking a lot of space and a lot of liberties up in a yeah no pen flash a good example of that is my full spreadsheet as well of my climb up to immortal 
Like, ultimately, that's my goal, right? I want to be the person with great comms every game who ITLs and doesn't give up. But that's... I'm, I'm a fucking human, dude. I'm not a robot. I just love the adaptation from both of these teams. Levy and are playing a slower defensive round in response to that. And Melzer calls for them to go contact forwards. Okay, if Shai's not going to use his utility to find out where we are, we're going to walk into it. Who will win? Who just willpower built over a long career with a long history of training and coaching? Or, guys, is this EDPI good? Beautiful. A system that Cruz figured out. A combination of Melzer working with the new coach. I'll win every time. That dude will get banned. And some of the time off as well. Oh, yeah. To ponder, to rethink, to make sure you don't get stuck in a rut. Yeah, some people... Warm up and aim, lads. Testing it's a GTA roleplay. Wait, the, the event is titled Crew vs. TBD. I should fix that. But if it works, it works. Some rest of the event. It's paying off. Crew vs. Lev. It's been a marathon this season. Save. Final round of the half. And apart from a brief showing from Leviathan, Crew have completely been in control. Lev are going to try and mix things up now with Tackle walking down mid. The operator, in theory, should be able to find these players, potentially, like Melzer and Nags. The contacting, yeah. But they, but they so normally hold the very safe positions. That's when you know you have a good yeah. team, though. Like, have you ever tried to play five stacks, chat? Like, the best League of Legends teams I was on were the teams where we'd be down zero to, like, 20, and we'd be like, you know what, guys? It doesn't even matter. We're the pyramid goddamn hype train, and we're just going to win. It'd be like, hell yeah. That's a minus eight. And then we just win or we just vibe out anyways if you can have fun while losing it's like oh, the biggest dub hit rival they were the two months Leaves it up to two for yeah no that quote i just said jeff is from a real game i played with my team pyramid hype train and we did win that game but we were down like zero to 20. that's like a real moment let's see mp wasn't in that game i don't think we had raichi tlf uh no more worries about the operator contacting I don't know who was mid. Ziani. Ziani was our mid laner that game. And then... Who was support? Ryder. Ryder. That was the clip. Didn't know that was a real quote. Yeah, no. I'm literally quoting like a League of Legends moment. I wish I had the clip, but it was from one of those old clipping services that doesn't exist anymore. Down as a deeper smoke, it does give him a lot of exit opportunities for spamming through. Link any resource of why exactly 408? Yeah, if Voltaic told me that that's what they feel is appropriate, and I said, Good. I literally am just picking a number, okay? I don't need to scientifically determine the best, I just need to put a limit so you heckin' weirdos who play on 9,000 stop. Like, that's it there's no scientific backing to it whatsoever it's just always the specifically the high dpi andes who are cringe as hell about it and like so insistent it's like bro to king and what he thought about this el clasico matchup ahead of it if you want to be lazy go go somewhere else especial por así decirlo porque totalmente no te, no teníamos la misma garra con la que entramos ya en el lower the 408 is just a conversion of some cm to 360 like fue... what about low edpi andes they don't exist dude nobody's like oh no i'm on 40 edpi oh no who's is that okay they don't exist it's always the heck in 9000 people it's so rare tasumoto like, do you want me to pull up the YouTube comments on the video? Because of course there are low EDPI Andes. I'm saying statistically, way more high EDPI Andes. It's like they're the more annoying group by far. You know, when you're pushed and shoved against the wall, when it comes to that scenario where this is your entire season on the line, LCQ, there's no second chances. It's everything. It's what it culminates down to. And who knows what's going to happen after this? It seems like Leviathan need their backs up against the Like, honestly, if you watch that guide and then you're like, I'm not going to change my EDPI and then you come ask about it, I'm probably just going to ban you. Because it's like, I explicitly said, please just go into this range and trust me. And if you're not going to do that, it's like, you're so annoying. You're actually just annoying. And manage to pull back. But you can't do that every time. You can't always let yourself slip at the first hurdle in the series and battle back.
Love the grammar from me. <laughs> yeah. And this man, it's like the you know, one super the hard line I draw, reason. and then people are still like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about on this one. It's like, dude, what the hell? Me when I'm English and say the El Clasico. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the classic match, of yeah. course. Of yeah. course. I mean, <laughs> this is going to be extremely tough for Levy Oh, wait, Pavel, Pavel, you got to remind me after game two. I have to walk my dogs after game one. On Haven versus I won't have time to do software development. But also... We've seen this before. We have seen this before, yeah. I mean, on split, 9-3 as well. Leviathan have literally been in the exact same spot before. But gosh, you think for the four months? In LCQ when they played against each other. But now they need to turn it around. Now it has to be a different result. And Nozwa, the player that has been so fantastic for them on split and had a break. Bro, I'm ready for the follow-up, Vod Tom. Are you hacking Diamond yet? Going missing here. Not able to find the value on the defense side, which should be his best. This is going to be very tough. We're only at map one. This is crazy. Four players grouped up, seeing if they can get a cheeky kill. Nozwa spots it, gets out. A clue of his life. There's a response. It's instantaneous here from left. Shy out in the open. There was no real coverage there. Ooh, that's tough. And Davies. The three position with the rendezvous. Ten health, though. They know where Davies is as well. They know exactly where that teleport went to. He needs help from Klaus. Deep flash. It's good. Davies dodges it and still lands the kill. He'll not online fast enough. The nade will clean him up and finish him off shy just poking and prodding towards the side here nozzle still containing and holding but he does get traded and brought down king he's close to the corner to one and done. they do have nade the they also. do have nade but heaven control here is you know it's not free the right chance look at that nade like look at that ability oh my ball. god it's so good too bad the astro is infinite ready to strike when his team needed it so pistol round for lev maybe to start or something a string of rounds potentially that's exactly what they need to get this started. There's no other option for them if they want to be able to win here on split. And that's going to show you a bit of the different tempo that these teams are playing at. Crew went for a four-person push down mid, and that's going to force a reaction. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what the? They're having a feet in chat moment right there. Bump it off. I love it. I mean, this is a day for the Latam fans. It really is. You can't lose. You really can't if you're cheering for one team or the other. But yeah, the region as a whole is going to be winning. Striking back. They are. What? With the shorty getting away with that. Next set. Claiming too close to the corner. This is suddenly in much more than danger. This is looking almost lost. The spike out in the open. Two players left standing. That economical advantage. It's insane. And the spike being down is a massive problem. I mean, Mazzino is so far away, just assuming that his team are not going to run into... Nags what do you do, man? Crew's got everything. Yeah. Nagzet in the corner, just being Caution able to pull here. those both out. Is they forced up and... Spectacular for his team. How do they Crew's out here with hacking. They have stars that they can Pistols, put dude. going to deny vision, but crew are going to spam. No damage done just yet. And he's a nerf shorty. No, any more nerf to the shorty, and you may as well just not have it in the game. Melza watching behind him, worried that they could have got all the way behind the screens already. Realizing they could have got out there, but he didn't pick up the spike. There's 20 seconds left. This extraction process has got to be moved a little faster. Yeah, no opportunities to pivot over to B. It has to land onto A for any chance to win the round here. So it's close. Kiss it. He's out in the open. And here it is. Time playing its part. 12 seconds left. Close to the corner. It's a 1v1. Oh no, Nozwa has the spike sticking it down here. Melza, does he choose to take the time with it? It's planted. Damage done. Only 78. Oh my god, he got unlucky, but it still works. Three right clicks is so unlucky there. I can't believe it pays him out, anyways. That's crazy. But that's incredible for crew. It well, the decision from Melza is really nice there. He knows that that's map one. There's a big decision process for his opponent. To what do you do? Down or to challenge him. He waits until the, he hears the spike sound planted, but then, oh, the classic right click almost betrayed him. Yeah, I mean, that is. <laughs> you're leaving up to a Go walk your dog, dude. Oh, you're right. right clicks. You really are, but yeah. Now they are sleeping insanely like cutely on the right couch right, right now. I'll let him. I'll let him rest just a bit like more. Hope for Lev. Oh, dashed, dashed in a moment. 
the wind taken right out of their sails. Desperation on display there. Taka hoping to deep dash, maybe take some space towards A, but he's brought down so early. Not ideal. Yes, it's a half by, but at this point, every single round, every single moment counts. Mail smoke? Right there. Ooh. Okay, this is reminiscent of old meta nonsense. This trip is so far up. Like they have to come up the rope to break it, which can be really scary. They might do it here. They sort of have to. Like that? As Eno ends up walking into them. Crew looking to get up to eleven. I think it's smart. Group up as well when you're up against the half fight. No danger of getting overwhelmed, a singular player giving over a weapon. So back way, way, way before yeah, any chamber nerfs. Teams would trip here the left side. on the map. And they'd trip sure, here. And then they actually would just well, give mid control because it's guys. fine. You can figure out where they're going. Basically for free. Of the players that are just dead right now. And having to think and ponder. The fact that they're down 410, I mean, a six yeah, right, I'll pull up on the side here. That would have wanted to open this. So difficult Our old to come back into split this. strat sheet with chamber. The trade -off for the that required two trips. Let's see. You gotta wonder if that's gonna impact them heading later. Lev have got to be able to brush this off unless they're able to mount a comeback. Because Pearl used to be at the top of Leviathan's map pool, but crew have looked amazing at it recently. The benefit you get when you go through that uppers, the double ban, moving Fracture and Haven. The second map, you know, the second map ban, a bit of a toss up when it comes to what crew would want to remove, but I think Haven's a decent one. And while you would, as a competitor, want to just focus on the here and now and make sure you get this round. It's that little pressure in the back of your head as you realize the score at the top of the screen. Oh, I got an image. Dash forwards. That's deep into heaven with a judge. With I like judge. It. Yep. Seen this play before, but no util to his name. That's the money running dry. So and this round looks really good for Leviathan. It's just looking at the minimap. Showstopper. Noswa, can he pave the way? Can he clear out a bit of a space and an opening? Davies. That's lit. Oh, That's so lit. To take that fight. But he does bring him down. Just the one for one. Taco close to the corner. Dog doesn't <gasps> clear it. Klaus. Oh, he's wide open. Wide open. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is so tragic. Taco just got robbed. In the final moments here. The dude should have gotten two. Are you kidding me? Still. Control. Oh my god. Level all playing tucked towards side. Series of these close angles and one of them positions down towards oh, it. Next no. it. Wins it out in the no, you can't do that. I, I want the game to be close. Oh my god. I don't think he got it. But I don't think he's got it. Damage done, but not the defuse. Barely missing out on that. All right, all right, I couldn't find split, but here was our fracture A attack default. And we literally had Hecke Chamber Trip here. Yeah, but then you go to the B attack default, and this is where shit gets messed up. Trip Dish and Trip B main and Chamber A main. Viper Lurk Arcade, you have everything. It was such a broken agent, dude. Turning point. Oh, Taco is so deep yeah. inside the pit. That's a dash inside to see if he can punish. He was pre maiming. That was from our. I recall telling you guys about this yesterday during the watch party. Remember when I said we had an unrated five stack that never lost? Yeah, those are our strat sheets for unrated. A fracture. So imagine you boot into a fracture and the enemy team's got defaults for their attacks. Like. What do you do? Unrated? There's literally nothing we can do. The Valorant system didn't allow you to Q5 stack with any rank. Okay. And I wasn't gonna smurf. What are you gonna do, huh? Would you rather I terrorized ranked on a gold account with JG? Which would you rather have? Because I wanted to play five stack with Brad and Ethan. We've seen amazing star level performances from Kesnit. But JG and I were idiot. And yet this is still him performing at his peak. 
<laughs> so we just ruined a bunch of unrated games. Like, I mean, it, it's still bad. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but at least, like, they could just forfeit, you know, if they didn't want to play us, which did happen a lot. A lot of people surrendered to us so fast. It was not even funny. He's got at least five, I think. Again, another decision. maybe. To save here, Josh. I yeah, I remember that game where JG got chamber ult on round two because we got him every orb. I wonder what this ends up doing to the mentality, but this is how they play. This is how they've practiced. What was the closest game? The closest game, and I do have a clip, I'll dig it up, was a fracture game where Brad was sick and had three kills all game, and it did go to OT. It went to not OT, it went to match point 12 12 because there is no OT. And JG and I had to win two clutches back to back. We won on 11 12 and we won on 12 12 and barely won. No, it's called sudden death, Alex, not overtime. And oh my God, it was so hecking stressful and it felt so good when we won. Let me find it. I'll go dig it up. Some premium raise gameplay over the course of LCQ. Some of the movement has been pulled out, been nothing short of incredible. Like Prime Bunny. Yeah. Going around, man. I mean, I think, you know, people are looking at Durka being able to win Masters Tokyo playing just all the rays and thinking, well, what's to stop us from yeah, doing the same? Not? If you've got a great rays player like Kesnet on your team, somebody that can play other duelists as well, but has a specialty there, add it into the compositions. I mean, Kesnet was playing rays on Haven too, which is actually a map that they decided to get rid of in this map veto. Would have still been a decent one. Yeah. We went 23 and 0, by the way. We played 23 games. Maps, because I, I really think that it could go either way on a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's only one map where it was obvious crew wanted to get rid of it, which was Fracture. Yeah. And then they kind of had their pick of which other ones they wanted to go towards. And it's difficult when you're in LCQ because the sample size is so small from what you've seen from your opponent and how good they looked. And were they playing against a team that was great or was the team exactly. they were playing against bad? It's very difficult to evaluate that. You just don't know the improvements teams have made over a month and a half. And I'm going to be honest with you. I thought we were going to come into map one and have a really competitive map between these two teams. And it got I'm looking, to the wire looking for a clip. Because I thought Lev looked explosive with Taco and Nosworth. They say sudden the death. Best. They do. They say this sudden death. This duel has not been able to get active at all. And that is full credit to crew. They've just shut it down utterly. Everything on the line now. Look at the investment. Of course, you have to buy up around it. One round stand between it, Melza spamming down, damage done certainly. And okay, I know the date I need to go to in DMs with Brad. And then we just have to you go. pray. You do not stand a chance. Cosmic Divide, it's a bit of respite. Away from all this damage, maybe you can get 3 1 4 and It looks like they want to try and attempt to try and fight through. They were gearing up for it. You can see Shy was holding a flash, I think, for maybe a pop flash play through the Cosmic Divider, but it had to give up chances for it, and the weapons are still not good. Two rifles, Plant only just going down close to the corner. King's got the pit online. Can it help? Pushing forwards now. It's crew trying to take space in it, but this is an Observer's Worst Nightmare. Walls and smokes and pits Dude, away. Dude, what do you do? Faced up, though. Look how close and tight the... Leviathan is, like, so Tom nervous here. Oh! Can't see anything, doesn't know what timing to be taken. That's Kesnet bringing him down and two standing. It's here. King with the Bucky. He's traded. It's spraying. It's random. It's a play. That's wraps. That's wraps. There'll be no blessings on the other side of that one. No Mods, pay out the prediction and start the next one, please. Winning map number one here. And in absolutely dominant fashion, crew showcasing that their map pick to start things off of split is one where they are utterly in control playing to their strengths as being a team that neutralizes defensive aggression and has excellent ways of being able to take map control. The combination of the sky and the rays with Davies to be able to take first contact and teleport away if I'm any hunting a clip. Occurs, I am hunting a clip. their strengths immaculately. And I just keep thinking about what Valen said, you know, take their permaban as map three just in case you win the first two cleanly. And with how good crew look here, and how little we saw out of Leviathan in terms of specific ways of stopping them from executing their game plan. Yeah. We're about to go into Pearl, where I feel like they just do the same kind of stuff. Mix up the tempo, have great ways of taking map control. They stop the defenders from getting aggressive. How does Lev respond? There needs to be that response. So we head deeper and deeper into this series. So the grand finals of LCQ, up number one, wrapped up here. Dominant fashion. Here oh, I think I found it. 
certainly that break not tempering the form that they've been oh no i didn't this isn't it. Do it let's send it down to the analyst desk after this just to break it all down bro i'm like on the hunt I'm on the biggest that. hunt for this clip of all time. Or sought help from impatient friends. Where is it? Or browse desperately for answers that only bring up more questions. Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right. Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at aimlabs.com slash discovery. Oh my god, Brad is a full VOD of our unrated games. <laughs> wait. Wait a sec. Let me let me make sure it's not doxing anybody or anything. This is coach. <laughs> You want to play? Let's play. Ooh, it's unlisted and okay. No, I can't show you this. It's a, like a long VOD. Like it's not just our game. Oh, that's tough. Sorry, chat. I teased it and I literally. It's got more than just the Valorant game in it. Unfortunately, the dupe is just recording. That sucks. Uh, do, do, do. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's not it. What the hell? Dude, what the hell? Bro, the number of times I've sent the word slobber knocker to Brad in DMs is a problem. It's actually a problem. Because I'm pretty sure I used this word around the time when I sent him the clip. And crew man 
managed to pick up that win on split in oh my god dude i'm not gonna find it you gotta be kidding me as they take their first map win on a road to champions welcome back everyone golden boy here alongside with the guards valen as well as mimi and sean gares and let's just jump right into this here because well that's kind of what crew did <laughs> they started the game off it felt like i looked away and then i turned back and it was 5-0 out of the break so it felt like this crew team is really showing that that little break that they had valen eh, not that much of a factor they use that time to grind yeah they were hitting almost every single shot i saw them take playing with max finding it dude. As a team and i want to shout out melzer because he was putting up phenomenal numbers on the smokes roll but not only that he was calling for the team and i'm telling you gb i've never seen crew call a map better than that that was amazing to see on their attack push pulling on the extremities inserting you guys are all just here waiting for me to find one clip of me getting kind of absurdly excited in an unrated game because I, I clutched up. Play so many of these four-one rounds where they're just pushing towards one side of the map, pulling out utility, and then. It really God, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. Chamber holding down everything else. I think this round eleven was a great example where they changed the pace from these slower rounds. Realized that Leviathan was gonna play way further. Back I have so many clips. This is a problem. I need to organize. All the way into sight and popped out and won the round. Those adaptations came literally after losing one round both times. That crew lost one of those early rounds, which is so impressive. To me. Yeah, uh, it was a calling masterpiece, like you said. Like honestly, they punished so much extremity aggression. Nags and B main was getting opening kills. At A, you had Davies constantly controlling the ramp with an op on chamber ready to TP away. It, it shelled up Lev so much. They were terrified of peeking these extremities, and they were afraid to make risks with yeah. the double duelist comp. And like you were saying, they're pushing, pulling rotations by taking vents. They're going up the vents towards A, down the vents back towards B, and they would constantly keep messing with the rotations between the sides. I'm finding it. Always hit the I'm finding it. The I swear. Zone. And they did so I swear well to you. starting these rounds strong as well. In that push pull, they were always ready to trade each other. And they did so many of those first kills. I mean, 13 picked up, and they converted 11 of those. I haven't rounds. read chat in like in five minutes. Has been so precise. Just a synergy between these players. I'm at the point like, where I just set my search criteria. Seconds. To yeah, literally show me every stuff. clip Klaus, I've sent, and I know it's within um, like this five month period, and I'm just scrolling, looking at the titles and thumbnails. Which is really good because I'm like, is it this one? No. He was this playing, one? Right? No. They kept picking, oh, one's there, one's there. And sometimes there'll be four coming at you. They were they were just playing the game plan of Lev so perfectly. And Klaus, man, he's been popping off. Look, yeah. at, look at his uh, stats compared before to now, man. He, just, he, he, he's, he's been a dynamic force on this team in this tournament, which is wild, Mimi, considering the fact that, oh, we genuinely didn't get to talk about him all that much throughout the regular season. Now, all well, we could talk about is Santa Claus. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Sean, I don't... I am so dedicated to the clip you have no idea that has had a bigger step up from the regular season to now and Klaus he's just been consistently excellent after being the guy like it just feels wrong for me to hype up this guy's getting oh my god I found them I found them he's done I found both of them both clips this is unrated we've never lost okay so the stakes could not be higher 33 11 to 12. Unranked, unranked. This is literally unranked. 33. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Wait, and then the second clip? Main. It's literally the same scenario. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. here man they have to wake up i think i'm not gonna lie they look a little shaky in the first place, maybe i'm a popping time off time the over an unrated game dude and that's but proof it's unrated okay you're not like whoa whoa he's smurfing you can literally see we won 13 to 12 relax 
right? You, you can't allow yourself <laughs> to go to ascent down to Owen. We were series. trying Levy so hard point, to win on frack to too, dude. Unrated. Pull off a reverse sweep again, okay, okay. I do have to like, walk my yeah, dogs. Sure, you do I'm going to miss the very beginning twice. of this game because I, I was hunting the clip. For love, for the Any mods who would said, like the to form of host, the hop in the streaming channel. The I'm sharing the screen. Please don't forget to close the prediction. Chat, remind them because I'm going to be about five minutes. I'll be right back. I'm going to walk the dogs. He's, he, if you do a yeah, push mods, on hop curl, in the streaming channel. React off of it really quick Say hi. The opposite side. And their spacing is so good in a pack of three. And Flash, this is join the channel. Like an A map for crew, and the Lev players have to step up. And for Leviathan, they really were struggling on that map. Not just were they being outcalled, but I think on the individual level, we saw a lot of really shaky moments. Yeah. Paco was whiffing a lot of shots, anchoring the site so My like, grand. Hello, I'm Fan Flash. Little fumbles. Oh, don't thank you. I'm I just have to say, that was the longest, like, 20 seconds of silence. Into it. And as I got you. Expect, there are no I'm just here eating popcorn. Standard, Harbor Viper GPC. Hello, I'm Pen Flash. MP. Oh, this means I can leave and you guys uh, no, uh, uh, I'm Pen Flash. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm also Pen Flash, actually. I'm also Pen Flash. Oh, oh no, it's Pen Flash. Oh, oh wait, your Grand is here. Team is ready for this map. <laughs> What's up, Grand man? Flash? Hey, Grand Flash. Grand Flash. Crew pulls out the 2 0. I think it's going to go 3 0 based on map 3 being ascent. Leviathan has to step oh, up, well, step up big right talk. now. Yeah. This duo is right <laughs> right now. Good talk. Good talk. Glad we all met here today. All right, bye. I'm just eating my popcorn. Do you know what's up? I'm just eating my popcorn. I'm just eating my popcorn. Somebody who doesn't have kids but says dad jokes, do you know what they're called? Are you sure? Yeah, definitely. Me? Just me. A faux pas. Yeah. No, a faux pas. 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 You know, he's, he comes in, delivers a banger ba dad joke, and then leaves. That's how it, that's how it goes. That's all you gotta do. Best streamer. We'll never top it. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see how you could top that. Players lighting up the stage right now, but so How's what's everyone? the server lore been the last two weeks? Oh yeah, chat. Fill in Lily on server lore because she she abandoned us for two weeks. It's oh messed up. Actually messed up. He's lying. I mean, I did, but abandon is a strong word. He's lying. I mean, I did. He's lying. It's true, but. <laughs> The insta back battle. Oh, crunk it. Thanks for seven months of prime. Oh, wow. I didn't get to be anyone's passenger princess in Minecraft for two weeks. Oh, that's sad. That's actually terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I went to visit family for two weeks, Shaw. So I was away from my computer. Hmm. Wait, the match already started. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I did. Let me see. Yeah, it started. Oh, oh end the prediction. Did we close no, the prediction? No, no, no. Close it. no, it's closed. It's closed. It's closed. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, don't push. Don't it's push. It's just like several oh. mods in the don't chat. Push, no one closed. <laughs> how do I? I how it's all do good. I Nothing had ha Nothing's stream? happened yet. You watch Hooch's stream and you mute it. Yeah. Or, yeah, you could, ho you could watch the. You could just watch it. On a different Twitch stream, but you know, yeah. uh, okay. I'm watching it on Twitch, so I'm probably behind like by a split second. Four positions doing a significant amount. Ah, uh, Udon's got a little sweater for the walk. That's cute. Yeah, I think he's cute. Isn't it hot there, though? Isn't it hot? Hmm. Um, it's, it's. I don't. I don't want to hear it. Hot. I don't want to hear it from you West, you West Coast people. It's so, it's so hot. It's so hot, I it's just, like 75 degrees outside. It's burning I, no, I just pulled up the room. It's like I thought there was a heat wave. Right now, yeah. I thought there was like a big heat wave across the country. Yeah. It's like a it's like a hundred here. Yeah, that's the thing. I was just where I where I just was, it was so hot and humid, I like didn't know I I I didn't know how to dress. Yeah, no, I saw that like the wet bulb temperature was like insanely high in like a lot of places in the south. What's the wet bulb temperature? It's like it like takes into account like humidity and stuff, so it's like it's like the temperature of like water evaporating, I think. Oh, okay. Hey Penflash. 
I hate pen flash. I hate pen flash. No, you can flash. What? Oh, huh? Yeah. W. It's crazy. Lily, where were you? You were like East Coast, yeah? Yeah, I was East Coast, yeah. Like, northeast? Yeah, yeah, Northeast, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's been horrific out here. Yeah, and then I was in the city for two days, and I wanted to... I, it was it was so bad it was so bad <laughs> like i stepped out of my office building and it truly felt like i was stepping into like a layer a, like a like a ring of hell it was like, i don't think yeah, into a pool. anything worse than uh like new york city or chicago when it's super hot and super humid yep yeah and there was like no breeze and i live my office buildings in a very touristy part of the city and, course, and so like oh, navigating right. through just like throngs of people like their sweaty bodies oh, like yeah. hitting <laughs> just like Lily, Lily oh. does not like crowds I learned I don't, from going I don't. to Disney World with her Freeze is out of rotation Yo! Yo! Is there people? Yo, you're back. Yo. Right, the quirky banana guy. I'm back! I was gonna, I was gonna say who just cute that you brought up the stream for us. Like what do I do with this? We're, we're, cause, well, the joke, because... Am I sharing the wrong thing? Oh, no, he can't. Wait, no, can you hear us? Oh, no, I was sharing the stream. It was just a joke, because we never talk about the stream anyway. Oh. Very meta. Like the Barbie movie. Yeah. Do we leave now? Yes. Leviathan was kind of cooking, huh? The site is granted, so... I'm hanging on chat. Still for I'm resisting. Looking at timing now. Waiting for the next wave of util. Maybe even just contacting. Yeah, I mean, the next wave of utility is not going to come out for quite some time. And the Trailblazer are already looking to try and disrupt that. Snake bite. <laughs> the angle is pushed out here. And yeah, contacting deep in the flash. The and flash through the wall. Melzer, oh my oh, god. Team. What? What? That was literally Leviathan's round. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He turns that and then gets two. Like what? The reckoning invested too. That's a pretty large asset that they would love to have for one of these economic swing rounds. Which. You no, know, the bonus round is an economic swing round, but also their rifles were just so low, their economy very suppressed. Dude is actually a problem. And that's just an unjustified 2K. What the hell? A pretty straight up fuel anyway. Yeah. But when the blind doesn't connect on him and does connect on Shy, it's game over. That's a brutal one. You'd never turn that in your life? Honestly, same. Like, you're chilling. That Viper that we were talking about previously. In the pre-show, Nags just, oh sorry, King, just spotting that out and realizing that Kesnet is pushed up deep towards B. He is the IGL is going to be feeding that information to the rest of the team and telling them to more quickly and aggressively take mid control. Oh. Davies. Recalling he knows watch. how much they've been playing for this middle position. Just gets the one and backs out. I respect it. So similar to what he did on the pistol round. And you can't push that. As the attackers, you just cannot no, push you that. You are Un never favored. Unless there is a massive what distraction. a goblin angle? What's a goblin angle? That distracts the entirety of the team. Can you elaborate on what a goblin angle is, Papa VP? Of course, he's still got this space up. With the this wall. is very dangerous for Melza. Oh, he's actually... He's actually insane. Are you kidding me? That reaction to jump air strafe? is insane 30 seconds again it resorts to this contacting all the way up not sure he's close to flash on the corner he's dude the rest of his team klaus is watching for it he is so fast there he doesn't even try to hit the shot he knows he's dead he's like well time to live corralling them if it's an accidental scroll wheel it was not he was literally already moving his mouse left the air strafe he was accidental. He would have been aiming to the right and shooting his gun. I can't believe this. I mean, if Davies does fantastically, that's a difficult shot to hit, and he does great. But how on earth is Melza not getting punished by Mazzino? Melza's positioning. Like, I can tell you the number of times I've accidentally scroll wheeled and 
clutched it into a clean airstrip? Zero. And I've seen pros accidentally scroll wheel. And when they do, they don't just turn it into a very clean airstrip. They get dizzy as hell because they weren't expecting to hit scroll wheel. What we need to see from them is once they've taken singular off, bark from Odin on the couch and then fighting aggressively for for dugout and trying to you know attack the players <laughs> that are back there. Yeah. Nag said the Davies. Now. Instead, Here. it's more contacting around. And this could get very sticky. Yeah, I'm not sure about the legitimacy of this pro counter role. I never said a counting challenge. They arbitrarily held one and then Penflash rewarded everyone. Out in the open. Pops up the orb, faking like he could be backing away. Look who's eager to take the fight. It's Melter. He's still there. Wants to take it to him. What Against the Stinger, nice. barely winning out. But he does win it nevertheless. And this is just a confidence what difference at this point. Melzer's looking to try and take the duel there. Wins it. And this is such a similar game plan so far. It feels like every single round has ended in a familiar way. Poking and prodding. One side doesn't work out. Well, it's your turn. Mazzino and Shy this time seeing if they can work their way in. But again, never to clear out dugout. High tide in the face. There was a player trap there, but it's just taking a fight through it. Oh my god. Over the top. That's he just walks in the Mali. Guess one. Two kills. Knife still there. No okay, surely. Has to whip out the weapon now. It's picked up the upgrade. Locked down. Placed down. They have to fight it. And Davies cannot defend it. Reckoning time. It's running so damn short. Davies makes a choice to try and fight into it. It's stunned up. That's a spike. Yeah, Dropped down. Out <gasps> in the open attack. No oh my team. god. What a round. Are you kidding? He, I don't even think he had enough bullets to break the thing. Knives in hand, helping to put pressure on those players in dugout. We'll see it on the replay. Davies perspective. What the hell? Spray down Mazzino coming in. And here comes the hero of the hour. Tackle over the top. Picks off two. And then with Phantom in hand. <laughs> yeah. Ignoring the lockdown and making sure he takes out the player. That is just nuts. These are the rounds that lever winning. Yeah, we are straight back into it. No messing around. No time wasted. Orb up, cascade. Control now taken. How does Kesnit angle? And how yeah. does Kesnit find an angle? Find an opening around this. The way that you play operator into this is trying to find the opening. Oh, way, man. Dude. Dude. Oh, steps in the south, of course. I mean, plenty more angles to play for with the new pearl changes, but that is a little bit too much. With him falling, that's the go button. Cove. Well, I'm now going down on top of it. King doesn't get away with it. Melzer Hoping again. and hunting for that timing. Melzer seemingly too aware for it. Four versus four now. It's evened it up. How does the fight get taken? Operator. They have Sky Ult here. Seekers. One still escaping. Zeno falls. Snag set. Dog. This is honestly like incredibly back and forth. Blind as a bat cannot see anything at all. This is like every retake is so messy. Like it goes Cruz's way, but I honestly could see it going Leviathan's way. If you run that back. Excellent stuff from crew. The way that Pearl B post plants play now is very different to what you will have seen during the regular season. It's not just everybody leaving the site and playing utility lineups. It's much more dug in, playing back holes, trying to anchor. And that what the hell? puts a premium on snake bites, on nano swarms to clear those areas out. And the Reminds me of a certain split game. <laughs> no, no, no. Because like, I don't know. This is a scrappy game. It's not an error-filled game, you know? Like, I know the game you're talking about. And that game was a mess. Things in a half armor. What's the play here? We're going to see a brawl and a clash. To mid, the flash does connect. 4-1 split. Yeah, no, exactly. All the players are like really dialed right now. It's just the. You gotta understand, at like a really high level, um, the defense playbooks are pretty structured and uh, reactive, while the attacking playbooks are very like planned, thought out, and dry ran. So, oh my god, what a shot. So it's like essentially. On attack, Leviathan is catching crew off guard. The crew is just like that good, almost. Because it looks so scrappy. Yep. 
Yeah, well, just trying to make the most of it again. Mazino as well, of course. Yeah. Don't take matters into your own hands, but... Like scenarios where crew get caught out here, but then it turns into a kill for crew is just pretty much the exact description of what's been going on this half so far. Crew looks more than solid. They look absurdly good. Like it doesn't make sense. Where did they come from? Find me a single professional level coach who predicted crew from the beginning winning it. You can find me plenty who predicted it at this point and even like a couple of weeks ago. But before we saw them play, like, where, what happened? Besides Joe's part of the run, did they do it before the tournament began at all? Because I only saw people predicting it after the first match. Who once again bears reminded it's calling against his former team. Same play by Lev. And I think it's justified again. to predict it after the first match. They played really well. And like you could see it. But Oh, he was like jokingly saying DMV have been losing to Myber before LCQ started. You can't blame him. Like you can't hooge keck him for that. Crew is literally zero and nine. They had no wins. And now they're playing flawless goddamn Valorant. These dudes are air strafing on a moment's notice when they get peaked, dude. They're all individually heroes right now. It's like reminiscent of how Fnatic is full of demons and they play good macro. I had them losing at the start of LCQ. I had them going down in match two, I believe. I have to check my predictions. Dude. Crew Fnatic champ finals. I'll lose my hecking mind if that happens. You have to understand, it's easy to look good against weaker competition, okay? Um, like, if you put my hecking premier team against a bunch of Immortal Ones yesterday, we would have looked insane. However, we faced a prepared team that we did not see coming, and we got shit on it. We probably looked bad. So just because crew looks good right now does not mean that they are world champion caliber. But it is a good sign. Look at that ready for the cross. But I'd like to see them play against some of the top teams. And I mean we're gonna get to see that from the look of it. They're about to Rio a BO5 and go straight to camps. How many times have we seen this from the left game plan? It's always the mid routing into the middle of the map, removing the kills or utility, but it's not been much bite after that, right? It's very reminiscent of 100 Thieves, yeah. And they were using their... Over sign of how down horrendous NA Pro Steam is? I don't think so. Rounds, they had Shai's lockdown, they had Mazzino's uh, reckoning. But now, now those Sentinels were looking like pretty good. Cloud9 has been looking strong. <laughs> and Leviathan took them down, and now Cruz taking Leviathan down. Kesnit's got the read here. He knows they're in B-Link. He knows they're here. Not baited. Smoke around the corner. I don't know. And he's got a lot of, like, rookie talent that just came out of nowhere. Like EG bringing Demon 1 to Tokyo and going on a, a pretty impressive run. And this is where Lev Ruby Cloud 9 too. Yeah. Look at the, they're so indecisive. Yeah, it, it just showcases in the positioning the way that I would easily put EU number one though. Like if, don't take, don't interpret me wrong and start the argument. Which direction is it going to go? Util being used to try and clear out towards the dugouts. And now you, now you have to force the fight towards secret. In the face, dashing forwards, Taco, he wins his time. So damn short, stay fight. It's denied it. The plant's not going down. I was up to shine and try to do it. Flushed up blinded. Oh, Flushed right through. And you have to stick it. All right, it's so good. He is the best team, but NA is the best teams. Does that make sense? No, shut up. That doesn't make sense, and it's pointless. This team is so good at making I swear, if you try to like take an inch arbitrarily in the NA versus EU debate to feel good about yourself, I'll type you out. Who just seem to be that's such a subjective thing to argue about like very elastic gameplay from crew you fight them okay 
They take a bit of contact. That's Giga Coke. Right back at you. Yeah, I mean, it, Bro capitalized really the word teams as if that somehow makes sense. Like, yeah, EU's got the best teams. NA's got the best teams. Or, like, EU's got the best team. NA's got the best teams. What do you say? And try and look for pictures contacting into the other into the other side. It's the same game plan over and over again. It needs to be something new. It does. And this is what the timeouts. Why don't we try to find more demon ones? Uh, I assure you, they are trying to find more demon ones. Um, players get tryouts all the time. Some hard B hits and force crew to play the B retake. But to be honest, the crew B retake looked really clean last time we saw it too. But while players can look impressive in like solo queue, they could look totally trash in tryouts. Like, just look at people in my chat bragging about being mid-round calm demons, and then they pop me in the in-houses. And they say three words in a one hour span. A lot of people are more talk than they are walk. Yeah, teams are looking for talent. It's just individual skill is a lot different than team play skill. You have to understand. Like, even if you can be a rank one caliber player on the ladder, it's totally different from being a fragger in a team environment this kind of area whoops that's uh that's a bit large but over towards secret in this kind of spot so potentially king calling that they're going to go for the same kind of thing over towards middle trailblazer goes out broken by davies whoa 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 okay smoke committed onto the turret over the top he spots case oh that's close but all of this is just fake pressure brand it's the same kind of idea and honest though i mean it's the same idea and I believe we're gonna so we watched fake and honest play solo queue and he's insanely impressive he's got all the mid-rounding he's got good decision making but that doesn't mean he's good on a team i i would say he's more likely to be good on a team than other people in his position given what i've seen but it like doesn't mean anything individual performance means nothing if team dynamic takes a hit do people get trials straight out of solo queue generally uh if you're really really high elo yeah but most of the time if you're that high elo it's because you've been on a team i let's see i'm trying to think has anyone really hit rank one without having coordinated experience i'm talking tier two not tier one yes that's not an answer to my question who Exer, didn't he play tier 2 cs go ion 2x i can't count him he literally is curry's brother he's been exposed to that type of play who framed me no he played tier 2 cs go dazner he plays tier 2 valorant you have to understand to reach that high of a rank you almost need to know how to play at a coordinated level once davies used his lockdown they pivoted dope i what do you mean he was a professional fortnite player <laughs> he's literally a pro whilst leaving the site have an opportunity to be able to get back in more easily they now have lockdown other options avail themselves he also was tier two competitive but he played against tier one teams I don't think anyone's hit rank one without coordinated experience. It's that important. In Rocket League, it's very similar, actually. To hit, like, SSL outside of 1v1, there's this server called, like, um, RL6 bands. And you talk to any Supersonic Legend player, and they'll all tell you to go play RL6 bands to get your practice in. Because it's just better practice. He has to reposition. He has to move. Everything's fading away. Scrims are just better practice than solo queue. And so when you're a rank 200 level player and you're already playing 500 hours just like everybody else, then you need your 500 hours to be worth more. And team practice does that. Ooh, Crew's been getting kind of unlucky with the movement shots. No! What? NZR, I've been there. I've been there. That was me yesterday. He's just like me. He's just like me. A round by Naxa as well. He goes on the flank. There's chaos everywhere. The rest of his team is holding them back from trying to get a fast B hit going. Delaying, delaying, delaying. And Naxa comes. How comes it for orders to pick up collegiate players for their team? 
Uh, not at all. I mean, it's more just about... The criteria is pretty straightforward. High Radiant. You do well in scrims. So if you're on a collegiate team, unless you're at one of the really strong colleges, odds are your team isn't good enough to face any tier one teams ever, like in any tournaments or even tier two teams. Some of the really good colleges are though, like they'll have a bunch of high radiance, like Giza's school. I don't know where he goes, but his team is really good. You basically need to be on a full high radiant team to get exposed to the scene. So if you yourself aren't high radiant, like you're not gonna really have a chance. That's great. They can take all of this room down towards B long without having to be too worried about the Giza's unit. You could probably find him on VLR. Can they convert? It would make the scoreline look so much better. This has still felt dominant from crew. Yeah. And yet it would be a seven five half if Lev can win the five v four. Not bad at all. Like so for example, when JG was like top one hundred, he had a tryout for Metro esports. If you know T Dog, he played for Metro. And that was a tier two org. So they basically accepted open applications for high radiance. That happens on occasion. Left of his own devices in the 1v2. Spike still needs to be planted close to the corner. Opportunities and chances to win this with King being so low, but you've got to think it's favored. And with that, it confirms they know his position. Damn, Nagzad is confident. Shouldn't be lost now by Lev. Now, they can set up crossfires, swing off King's contact. Bro, if he gets a lucky shot, I swear to God. A bit of a reposition as well as King goes into spawn. I mean, this is perfect play by King. Just too much to watch for. Jump spot. First one, King. Oh my White god. Th that's like so. That's way closer than it should be, no? That's like really well played by Nagzat. Really well played back by Leviathan, though. With Taco having his performance that the team needed to be able to pull some of those rounds off, his entry in here, the previous round where he had the Bladestorm online and he picked off King inside the pit. These are. I apologize, uh, Naxa inside the pit. These are major, major rounds for him to be able to do. Defining moments. Still, I feel like crew are playing the better game. Leviathan being able to win that pistol really helped them. Definitely got the yeah, I'm trying to think. I, you're going to have a hard time finding a player who's so like below top 200 Radiant who isn't on a team, so like a tier two or tier three, trying to get better. Fighting chance in this I'm trying to think, because I know a lot of Radiance, and they're all on teams. About these crew retakes, because it has been truly immaculate to see them. And it honestly felt like uh, we were in an infinite loop for a moment. Yeah. Where they just honest, you think he's not on a team? But that just goes to show how well I'm pretty sure he's... Just the flexibility at the A site to kind of receive He's got that. tons of team experience. One on yeah. the initial fight. I thought Nag did a really good job. He throws that towards the bottom of the scoreboard of doing that on these A hits. And you could see the one looks like he's LFT right now, but like he's played on hella teams. I don't count it. I'm talking about like a player who's never played, even in low radiant, who's never been on a team. Tiny turbo thing for the tier three. Two versions. Their flood retakes on B were really good. Players were so fast to rotate in with the like Dopey, for example. You could argue, oh, he's radiant, not on a team. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm about like has no team experience and is currently radiant. But the thing is, Leviathan with that pistol round is very few of them. They do exist, but yeah, and to talk about the retakes a little bit more when you're so confident with your retakes it makes the entire game for leviathan so pressuring because even if you're doing well in the mid round getting onto the proper site now you really have to worry about your post plant even f up 5v4 it was hard for them to close out these rounds and going note into the xxd half, have to see i don't know link their tracker are they currently radiant on their attack post plants because their retakes were incredible this half though could be difficult crew on this attacking side are really i'll see if i can find them on vlr if they're currently radiant control and working the mid round leviathan were really trying to slow the game down but they rank one right now oh then they totally are you kidding who's been excellent at it yeah, and I want to talk about the composition here. <laughs> He's on a team right now. Relies on crew to be able to, uh, or Le Leviathan rather, to make the mid round pushes here to get the. <laughs> well, hey, it's seven five, and you get two, and. Leviathan <laughs> in the fight let's go ahead if he's if he's rank one there's no shot they're not on the team like are you kidding 
or hasn't been on one. You can't get that good at this game without um, practice like that. You got to understand, playing on a team is so much more beneficial because one, you get VODs from all nine POVs in your lobby. So you can watch back what the enemy saw when you peeked them. You can see how the enemy calmed when you ran a fake. Two, you get direct feedback from your teammates on how you're playing, what it's like to have you on the team. Do you count prod? No shot. It's going to be applying pressure on the defensive side. Nobody to receive this though. I mean, a four-one setup. Yeah, they are just fully walking. Isn't Prad like exclusively duo and with pros, and he's low radiant? Kind of a two Guapo. I'm pretty sure he has a VLR. I'm like 99% sure Guapo's played with pro players and has a VLR. I don't think he tried to go pro, but I think he's had exposure to that level of practice. People share their VODs cons with the enemy. Yeah, it's not uncommon when you have like a practice team. Ooh. For example, there's a team um, JG was on. Uh, chapter 4. And Silent X was actually on the main roster when JG was on the academy team. And the two teams would play each other pretty frequently and record all, all 10 POVs. Yeah, it's just so absurdly beneficial for like your improvement that that's why those types of players end up being the highest rated players it's on average. They just have such a big advantage because like your teammate can just be like, hey, I don't like it when you do this. And I don't think many people do. It feels really bad for my POV. Like I'm sure it feels right from your POV, but I think you should try this instead. And having that type of feedback is so absurdly useful. So they've thrown Nagzor. It's Timmy he doesn't count. He's played professional Apex. From the defenders, they'll be able to bloom his. They can drop it whenever they like. I mean, at this point, they're just facing, not even using it. Yeah, very willing to take the fight, aren't they? They've done a spot here at this high tide, just being used to try and reposition close to the corner. You, call a you gotta understand, a lot of the skills transfer. Like, team way. play is no team play through heads. and through. Not One of the reasons why I was so good at um adapting my team play quickly like if you watch my vods back when i was climbing it's because i was on a, one of the top rated challenger league of legends teams so like communicating effectively came very naturally because i'd learned how to do it there's 20 seconds left, and he'd have to recover the spike and kill everybody on sight. Just no chance. It's just like hell. Just watch me and MP play double up in TFT. Like I bet you've never experienced that level of trust and speed in TFT double up before. Because him and I played on a hecking team in league for like a decade. Like I can literally be like, send it. He just sends it. We're like platinum. It's just the team play element of the game we're good at. Because they go for the you know, play. We've seen both of these teammates. teammates try to mix things up. Maybe in the chaos of the situation as well, you know. Wow. I was watching it. Is it spirit linked? Yeah, exactly. That's almost what it probably looks like. Time, able to just walk out. No smoke in his face. Yeah. Flash connects. And those players are kind of sitting ducks there on the attack side. That's the trouble when you use that high tide to try and cut across. It doesn't block yeah, exactly, Phantom CS. Yes, that's my favorite line. It's like a really good teammate would tell you how high to jump if it really mattered. So, like, I don't like the statement, like, when, oh, if he says jump, just ask how high. It's like, no, don't ask how high. That's inefficient. You say nade yourself, I'm already dead. <laughs> Your brothers, thank you for the tier three. I think it's, it's like about the selflessness of it all. Like, I trust MP not to throw our entire game by costing my economy. You know, like he wouldn't tell me to do something so detrimental to the team that we lose just for his own board strength. So I don't even question it. I figure that they've already thought about that. It's inefficient to debate. Bullets firing. Very lucky to get out. 
This has called all of the rotations over. I mean, look at the pack making its way to B. Meanwhile, the attackers have still not decided exactly where they want to go, but regrouping with their IGL. Who has yeah, teamwork's the one thing solo queue can't teach you effectively. You can learn it through solo queue, but you'll never catch up to the top, top, top players if you don't join a team. Because they're learning teamwork at a much more efficient rate. But that's what the in houses are for. You don't have to join a team. Hit Ascendant, join the in houses on my stream. Access to the site, but already to rotation from left. They are. Grouped up, barreled up. There's a flash into the corner. Davies dodging. I'm literally giving you that environment. So that way you don't have to make a team. You can just click a button to enter a queue and get put on a team with like minded individuals. Oh my goodness. Good luck. Not the chance for it. I read of Lev. Heavy over rotations, but no punish there. And I think that. There is an EU in-house queue, Semnik. But yeah, you can't play with me in EU. However, I, I do plan at some point I'm making like a longer term trip to Europe so I can run EU in-houses. I think that'd be lit. Gotta hit Ascendant before Hooch makes it to EU. Yeah, no, that is a thing I will do. Not short term, but I will. Like, it would just be so cool. And then Leviathan realizing that they could save utility and then crew going for contact plays. Both of these teams are trying to adapt. Crack it, David, the tier three. To work out what's happening. And I think APAC is the tough be one because you can't go to one place and play with all of APAC, you know, because APAC can kind of read, span like a hecking 5,000 mile radius circle. You know, it's like the whole world. You got to think. There's, there's a tell here that Lev are using to be able to get their defenders in the right position. And crew Players in APAC can have 23 ping to one server and then 100 ping to all their other servers. Really anticipation already there. Oh, Kronk gets in for the EU inclusion. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I want to travel Europe anyways, but... Ideally, I'll probably just go to like a team house, play games from there, and stream. There it is. No nuance to getting here for crew again. Heavy play onto the extremity of eight. Look at the orb, funneling it into Klaus. Maybe that's the big one that they want to. The country would like to go. I want to travel like all of Europe. Europe is really cool. I every day I wake up and I curse my country for inventing the car because we adopted we got too excited about it and now we're paying the price like i live in seattle and it's one of the cities that's better about this we're like actively reducing the amount of roads we have all the time this is too many and a lot of european cities are like really hecking cool i want to visit no defensive rotations just yet i like to see this as soon as the orb gets propped up towards B long as well, the Seekers now connecting and collecting into a bunch of these players into mid. This gives them yeah, Seattle's working on a two-year plan for their waterfront to make it like super pedestrianized. They're taking down like this huge road. It's already closed and it's going to be like a protected full bike path that's like 10 miles long and then like this walking path along the water. Oh my God, it looks so sick. Separated away. Vulnerability as well. King's there applying it to snake bites. So difficult to chew through. Trying to get them south in, but it looks like crew are just lost. There's the cove. Beam but you know, Houston's a joke. Stuck and planted. An extension to the round, but they are losing players left, right, and center. Only two left standing. It's Kesner and Davies. You'd have to pull off a master class, and they're playing from these positions. The cove blocks off one of them. That's a beautiful usage of it. Forced to beam it down. They know Kesner's dead. There's one. Seattle turning into Vancouver too. No, it's just, yeah, I know. I see your slash ass. Don't worry. But this is the best part about Seattle. Okay, in Canada, Vancouver is seen as the most attractive place to live because Canada is shaped like this, and Vancouver's here, where it's like the warmest and most temperate. In the United States, Seattle's located here, 
where it's seen as one of the like rainier and colder places to live and so it's less desirable but there needs to be it's it, they, people don't realize it's actually so lit it's so lit it's literally like vancouver weather which is to die for in canada but in America, it's like, oh, whatever, dude, it rains. Dude, they don't get it. They don't get it. It's been blue skies outside for like the past four weeks. 70 degrees. Like what? Dog broken. And now they know where the operator is. Is so crime not a major issue in Seattle? Do you mean per capita or do you mean like there's just a lot of crime? It's a city. It doesn't really matter. It's a major issue in every city. I'd say crime is a problem pretty much in any urbanized city in the United States for sure. Per capita, I do not believe it's one of the worst um, culprits. I believe that's Detroit, New York, and Chicago. Miami, maybe? Correct me if I'm wrong. I am talking almost out of my ass. The only issue Seattle's so expensive. Seattle's actually like the cheapest major city in the United States. Like if you're talking like major. Boston's more expensive. New York is more expensive. Chicago's more expensive. LA is more expensive. SF is more expensive. And then you can get into like smaller cities. Like Portland is probably cheaper. Um, Pittsburgh is cheaper. But you're getting out of major city territory at that point. Down to just Davies. Everybody cleaned up onto the site. Just picking up the pieces, maybe. Do that damage to the economy. The rent for places close to me is crazy. Do you work in big tech, Enzo? The rifle's huge. If the answer is no, then that's why. It really sucks. But, um, like, West Coast... The three West Coast cities have been, like, taken over by big tech. So, if you do work in big tech, the rents are, like, totally fine. But also... The Lev if you don't, the rents are unreasonably high. So the unit I'm in in SF is more than twice as expensive for reference, Enzo. Like the unit I have in Seattle, the same size and location would be more than double the price in San Francisco. So scale-wise, it's much cheaper in Seattle. But when I say cheaper, I don't mean cheap. These are two different things. Seattle's quite expensive relative to, you know, living in a suburban area around the United States. There's different rent for people in big tech. No, there's different salary for people in big tech. It pays a lot of money. And so it inflates the, um, the cost of living because Seattle in particular has tons of huge tech companies in the area. And so they they pull in a lot of talent. For example, I got relocated to Seattle to work at Uber. I used to live on the East Coast and Uber fully paid for me to move out to Seattle because they wanted me to work at their Seattle office. I like say less. And so I'm part of the problem in that case because rents go up because people like me move out. And so demand goes up and so prices go up. These are the kind of things that will be going through each coach's mind and the players. I don't think it has to be that way. In fact, I'm kind of living proof it doesn't have to be that way. Because every other Valorant coach made this argument, you know? And like esports coach or in general. They're like, oh, demand is higher. I'll increase prices. I'm doing the exact opposite and making more money than them. So, I don't know. I don't think prices have to go up when demand goes up. I think there's other solutions. It's just... We'll, we don't want to get too political. I'm just stating how it is, not that I like how it is, you know? Ooh. Exactly. Over here, when demand goes up, my prices go down. And you know what happens? I make more money. Answer that, hecking economics teachers. Is it a flood attempt to try and get back in? Cove is down. No spam into it. Stuns. It's rattling. 
Pushed up onto them here, Melter. He has to stand his ground to dodge away from them. They're off from them, yet still they get the kill. On to Shy. He had to try and punish that, of course. They were locked up into that position. Now three players left standing. The man goes up, prices go down, Criteria gets harder. True. Although Criteria will stabilize at some point, and then it'll just be more entrance, you know? Players are dropping like flies. It's left up to Kesnit. One shot there, flick and reactions, cove in his face though. Trickle up economics. <laughs> the bigger I get, the more gift cards I give out. It's the bigger we get, comrade. I'm not getting bigger, we're getting bigger. The banana community grows. And we all make money. Started up in a player advantage situation by Taka with this lovely shot, but responded instantly. Okay, okay, before the Redditor hecking take comes out, though, of course we're not all make, making money. I'm the only one making money. The average tier 3 is net negative, and they're just supporting the community because they're goaded. I know. I know money's not being created out of thin air. Shut up. Okay, now that I've huge oracled all of the annoying Redditors, back to the game. They gave Mazino a chance to respond and left flooded back. You said it. That was probably the turning point here. Momentum now for Leviathan. And they have responded beautifully after going down 13. Somebody was going to say it, and I wanted to say it first. So they realized how, like, pointless it is. Of course I know that. The fact that they bounce back here on full. Good signs, honestly. Trevor Chat, you want to print money? We both put $10 into a box. The box now has $20. I will pay you $10 for that box of $20. But you paid nothing for that box. I just gave it to you. Now I'm plus $10. And you're plus $10. He went for a pick up. Immediately regains map control for his team and information. Which is going to allow them to stack B and stop this hit from coming through from crew. I tied propped up. You see the worry. No flash by pocket of Klaus. Right there. Their flash does confirm. A lot of players waiting behind it. One and done position from Mazino. There's a smoke as well. There isn't really a trade attempt, but no, they all push it together. Wading through the high tide. It's flawless. Everybody alive. I'm just thinking back to that prior round. One, yeah, the one that really made the difference now because it's Viatan leading to 11. Another gun round on the horizon, but it's getting away from crew, isn't it? It is. This is you guys talking about natural disasters? I'm just here for the ride. Everyone dies anyways. If I die because Rainier goes boom, it's no different than I, I kick it the can at 90 in bed, you know? Either way, that's natural causes. Yeah, I'm out here just living, exactly. So the flash didn't connect, so Klaus doesn't use the trailblazer. He realizes there's nobody pushed up deep. I don't think you can name a single place in the world that's safe from natural disaster. You can certainly name ones that are more dangerous. If Rainier blows up, can you lower coaching costs? Yeah, if I'm still alive and I survive Rainier blowing up, I'll drop coaching by a dollar. I'm down. Ooh, wait, Davies is having a round. Oh, man. Spike is planted, but he is surrounded. Does he hear the footsteps? No, it's slow going. Mazzino, he was creeping up behind. Leviathan. There's the 12th round. Locked up, claimed up. Leviathan. Fully in the driving seat now for Mount Have you ever climbed Rainier before? No, I'm not really into intense mountaineering. Providing the final dagger in the heart potentially for crew. But Tarkalia, I mean, we were talking and hyping up the battle of these two jet players. The desk saying you don't get a better opportunity. I've seen so much more defense sided since the small pearl changes. Why are you air quoting small? Did Riot ever call them small? Did I ever call them small? Despite Davy's best efforts. I think at that point the damage has been done. Oh, I'm yeah. genuinely asking. Like, what I don't understand the the air quotes as if you knew better than straight. than them. Who's them? The top of their pool during the regular season, but crew looked amazing at it too. 
I recall pogging off my gourd at the pearl changes, saying this fixes a lot of the problems with B. Oh, in your opinion, they seem small. Oh, okay, okay. Just as we were talking about how great Lever been looking. Yeah, I mean, of course, after a run. You misuse them then, I guess? My bad? No, no, no. I'm literally on the spectrum. There's almost a 100% chance that I misinterpreted you, not the other way around. It's like almost guaranteed. They're going to use it to clear out their site. That's going to give them an indicator. It's Davies in main. He's going to do so much more, but there's a wall. My social incompetence knows no bounds. Oh my God, Leviathan. It's a series. Defensive half was absolutely immaculate from Leviathan. Their players found moments. Tackle with big rounds. We can easily fit in one more game. I can fit in one more game. Stack in the right sights. Run the prediction. Watching the VODs doing the prep. Had a bit of time coming in against their Ladam rivals and giving them the business. They've done well to come back as well for that. For Premier, yeah, I've got Premier in literally an hour. You appreciate how humble Hooge is right there. What the hell are you talking about? No, no, stop adding deeper meaning to this shit. I swear. I'll be like, I'll like objectively rate my coaching like not the best compared to some others, and people will be like so humble. I'm like, no, like literally. I how does one make a statement that can come off as humble but you don't want it to come off humble you know what i'm talking about how do i make that type of statement i want to be like i'm not being humble i'm just being serious i'm genuinely not joking is that the preface you need nesio thank you for the two three They're going to get us all ready for map number three. Don't go anywhere. You know you don't want to miss it. You can't humble something for other people to decide, not yourself. Fuck. Well, then fuck you. I'm the best goddamn cookie clicker on the planet. And nobody is better. I'll break the game, dude. I can decide to not be humble. What's that? Getting a phone call? It's my lunch chat. It's my lunch. Say fuck you, but then say your humble statement. You think that works? Two or three jail fix? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so in tier three jail, the problem is that we're allowing tier one subs to send messages and that's so here's the, the logistical issue I'm not even sure if there's a fix to this, by the way. The problem is it basically says, oh, tier threes. No, you can't type. Oh, but tier ones. Yeah, you can. And the problem is a lot of you goobers in chat have tier ones and tier twos like you've got all of them. So what it actually needs to do is it needs to set. It doesn't need to set these to true. It needs to set them to neutral. How do you do that? Is it just, I think it's like this. It needs to be like a negated thing. So it neutralizes that. I think that's proper tier three jail. Uh, anyways, we're not going to test until the predictions close because otherwise I'll literally break the prediction and you won't be able to bet. Which would suck. Yo, Moochim, thank you the four month prime. 
If you're enjoying the absurdly lazy Watch Party content, where I just have the game up while talking about generally things that aren't Valorant, then don't forget to unfull screen the stream and check if you have a free Amazon Prime subscription available. With your free Amazon Prime subscription, you can support your favorite streamers at no additional financial cost to yourself. It just takes money out of Jeff Bezos' pocket and inserts it into your favorite streamer's pocket. I appreciate if you could check if you have one available. Thanks. Oh my God, plus 2,000 cookies per second. That's not bad. With Verizon's new My Plan, I get exact. That's not bad. That's not bad. The better word for when you can easily admit you're not perfect and are probably at fault. <laughs> so the problem is when people say humble to me, I interp. Yo, dogs, chill. Yo. Chill, chill, chill. I think I think my food's at the door. One sec. resume rant so when people say that when people call somebody else humble usually they're saying no actually i do think you're like better which is that's what i don't like so like imagine person a has skill set b and they say i'm not the best at b objectively and they say i'm like maybe top 10 though like confidently so they know they're really good but they're they want you to know for sure they're not the best the, and let's so let's say they put themselves like here okay when somebody in chat's like oh you're so humble doesn't that message like imply that you rate them higher than they just rated themselves so i'm asking how can i make this statement with some preface where i'm like this is genuinely where i almost certainly belong on the rating tier list and then it's like anti-humble energy like no humble backs you're not allowed to call it humble you know like i'm playing tag on the playground and i say no tag backs <laughs> people call me humble and they say i'm the best to ever do it no they they do not do that. Who's they? Who's people? People will apply their interpretation regardless of said preface. Yes. Yeah, so how we need like new words then. We need to invent a word that says you're not allowed to interpret this any other way. I need a word for that. As in like, I'm going to make a statement now that must be interpreted literally. Dude, the word is literally. Fuck, we ruined it. We had a word for this and the entire, my entire generation took the word and gave it the inverse meaning and now the word doesn't exist. Oh my God, the word is literally. But the word no longer means what it was supposed to mean. Ah. Use a thesaurus. You're right. Thesaurus, literally. Verbatim. Exactly. Precisely. Nah, oh, these are like a bit different. Truly, not figuratively. <laughs> Undisputably. That. That's good. That's good. Okay, we've expanded our lexicon. I will attempt to utilize this newfound power next time I find myself in this type of scenario where I'm like recommending other Valorant coaches who are 
indisputably better than me at certain aspects of Valorant coaching. Look at that. Holy shit, I did it. Did it work? OMG, oh, you're so humble. You slash J. I'm fucking, I'm fucking time you out forever, you piece of shit. <laughs> Bro woke up and chose violence. This is not up for debate. <laughs> the problem is, okay, 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 okay. So I can shut up people in the chat who are like, wow, so humble. But what do I do when it goes up on YouTube three weeks later and some YouTube commenter calls it humble? I want these people not to comment that. How do I do that? We're not done. We are not done. Call them wrong. <laughs> Shadow Panther. <laughs> Dude, if you, I swear, if you guys ever saw how many people I shadow ban on YouTube, you would actually know that there's something wrong with me. Like, I'll do it even if, like, even if someone had told a really funny joke, if there was no flag, I'll be like, you know what? Too dangerous. You're gone. <laughs> most you've shadow banned from one vid i don't even know dude what's the most number of heckin french fries you've gotten served in a small french fries at mcdonald's before you don't keep count do you watch bro drop the heckin 58 in chat i'm gonna need proof i'm if you don't have a spreadsheet where you count the number of fries you got, then I won't believe you. Because that's the type of thing I would make if I was interested in counting. And so if you haven't done that, then I don't believe you. Is something outrageous at the end of the clip? So that's what YouTubers, commenters focus on instead? Well, so... All right, all right, process time. Welcome to episode 1000 of how I slowly built up a very efficient process for getting my videos up onto YouTube. Step one, my stream is segmented into YouTubeable bits, otherwise known as individual VOD reviews. Step two, I remember fun bits from those VOD reviews. And when I highlight my Twitch stream, I write that fun bit in the title. So this Astra Pearl. VOD that happened recently will go on YouTube objectively because it's here and you see I said the intro is that we had we never defaulted a viper wall and we never faked smokes and then I want my editor to cut to the clip of Sob and FNS doing it immediately that's what I want the intro to be the problem is my editor has a lot of agency as opposed in like retrospect in terms of what gets included in that intro like when does he cut me off that's up to him I don't care I let him worry about that. I just tell him the bit that's like the most interesting intro that I want to highlight in the video and I let him do everything else. So like here, I'm like, oh, we should get close for the sky flash. And then I went on a long rant about these things, but I don't know when he's going to cut off that rant. I don't care. I trust my editor. I pay him a lot of money. Week of next week's intros. No. So then I cut these, I take the link and then I put it into a Google keep that I share with him. And that keep is long. We have a queue chat. You think those are going up next week? I got, I got news. Ooh. Let me. I want to make sure I don't link, uh, leak anything. Yeah, perfect. This is fine. I can show you this. So I've got this uh, long queue and keep of a link to all of those Twitch VODs that are cut up for my editor to grab and edit. And then additionally in my YouTube, there's already like six unlisted videos that have not been released yet. So we have quite the queue. So I guess that Astro video is probably 10 videos away or like a week and a half, maybe more, probably more. Because there's also scheduled ones that always go up, like Funday Friday and weekly pro analysis. Those skip the line.
Yeah, I was actually talking to Dopi about this. And it's free for me to like share this approach because honestly, this is good life advice. Let me just open paint. So when I went full time, I still treat my streaming career as like a nine to five. Okay. Ascent is going on. Mods, can you close the prediction? Well, um, the question here. is, whilst banning this map, but th this is the last party over there. Deal with it. In the background, have they been so, actually finding new stuff? I mean, you take a look at where I stream oh, until here too. Most days. Is this going to be some kind of tiles crunch play? Some hacking, um, like freeloaders might stop stream here and then just enjoy their extra free time. But I don't do that. I have another hour now here where I make a thumbnail for the video, a title of video that's going to go up. And I uh, highlight the things I just showed you. So I update the queue. And I have another time block that I allocate towards money. Just like paying people, taxes, flagging transactions, making sure I'm saving, whatever. And then here is like improve my process. So that's things like building that keep that I share with my editor, figuring out how to get the videos up on YouTube with less work from me to shorten the amount of times I spend on these things. But that'll just grow the length of this thing. Like I will always stay working nine to five. And then the most important thing is like, don't think of your day as 16 hours. Like this will go on to like midnight or whatever. Cause I do wake up at eight. Don't be like, oh, I've got 16 hours a day. Let me schedule 16 hours of stuff. You've got six. You do not have 16 hours of energy. So I always need like at least a four hour free time block or I will burn out. So right now my free time block is like eight to midnight. I don't do shit. I do whatever I want. I play TFT watch anime, anything. I think shorter than four hours and you're, you're going to like overthink it. You'll be like, oh, I can't play one more league game. I only have 30 minutes, you know? And that sucks. So I need my like free time to be not too spread out. I need to be big blocks or at least one big block in the day. I was talking about this at the beginning, so was Sean. That's what I was talking to Dopey about, because he had a he had a lot of free time in his day, but it was like hour slices, and I wouldn't even feel comfortable queuing up for one game of ranked Valorant in an hour of free time. You know what I'm saying? Because you could queue could take a while. You could get a dodge, and then could go OT, and then all of a sudden you're missing your your thing. But you might end up seeing Leviathan saving their utility. But you had scheduled. So it's like an hour of free time. It almost feels like it's no free time. Yeah, he has lured himself into the Holy. Mid, unfortunately, not able to capitalize. He was making sure the moles couldn't see him. Yeah. <laughs> it's tag. He's putting out these players here, but. All right, I'm going to get my hands greasy. I got burgers. Control of the extremities, build up the orbs, farm up the orbs. You can get any picks, but it is healthy for Lev. Three players grouped up. Time running this short. Enjoy Blue Lock. Dude, Blue Lock is so good. I really like Blue Lock. Happening with the in houses? Yeah. It's like a mistake you make once and you don't make again. I made it with League of Legends once where I queued up and I burned more than the hour and it's so stressful. I hate being the guy holding people up or being late. I I'll almost never be that guy. That's why my stream says it starts at 9 a.m. Pacific. I never start that late. I'm always early. Under promise, over delivery. This is gonna be a large yeah, MP, that's why you stayed on my team. You know how many people I I kicked off my league team through the years? Because they missed, like, practice? If they've missed practice more than once, they're gone. Like, I'm just not interested in scheduling with somebody who doesn't show up. My rule was basically... Either you give me 48 hours notice or you give me later notice, but you already found a sub who's a, who already plays like what you play. And meanwhile, all this time, right? They know that 
who are going to be running 1-3-1s where you have a player super far back. Right, this player's really far away. Melza all the way back here. And in the meantime, the turret is just controlling and giving information. Whenever I get like invited to things so by other streamers, I'm super respectful because I used to be the guy who scheduled all of the league shit and it is so annoying dealing with people. On average, people are late habitually and it's not even their fault sometimes. It's like different cultures learn different types of clocks. Some people, they're just late because that's how they grew up and it just feels right to them. It, they don't even think they're being rude. And then other cultures, it's like seen as absurdly rude if you're even a minute late and you'll always be alerted things. I'm in that group. What that means is, even when they see a setup like this from Leviathan, that Lev have not been running very much before. There's not much VOD footage of them Luka having Hansi King play in mid, ready to flash through a smoke or anything like that. With Shy playing over towards A, they just don't... Yeah, Neil Javier, I grew up and one of my friends is from Brazil. He's just like that. Actually, my friend Chris, who came and made Pi, he's like that. You'll schedule things with him, but you never expect a certain time. By the zero point yeah disrespecting it maybe the goal of this and i have nothing against him for that it's just that's how he is i wouldn't have him on my league of legends team but i'll be his friend adsing but they double faced it in the end and mazina will pay for his life one for one there it's not too bad whoa baits out a peak from shy who just manages to get yo welcome back tom very dangerous that's exactly what nags and melza are looking for and trying to prompt out trying to punish Here's where crew like to group up. I'm never late because I don't go outside. Go you didn't slash S, so I'm going to say, you could easily go the fuck outside. Off the null and this one in. If you're not outside, like, at least once a day, then you need to stop watching a talking banana on the internet. I'm being real with you. Might have even just been King's own flash. I'm not even too sure. Davies just dropped down. Like we just had a 15 minute break between games. I think Davies go outside. Just got that one off. But yeah, you're right. Both KO is using a flash there, but somebody's found value. <laughs> and Tackle and King are going to make the very difficult decision of saving this one. And I was wondering in the setup to all of this round as well. You know, we mentioned Davies built up that null command. Really oh yeah, yeah. If your job is outside, you are chilling. You are so chilling. Like if you work outside. He tanked it, and at that point, there's really no help in you. You are being drilling. But at the same time, but it's cold outside. That's fine. Down meant that he didn't have to worry about the recon dart. It's much easier to try and anchor and take a fight in that spot, especially if your reaction times are good enough to pop both the nano swarms. Yeah. As the null command's coming through anyway, which he pointed out, he, he did manage. So you don't necessarily have to play full retake in those situations. Again, especially when you know the crew and all I'm saying, all I'm saying is picture this. Kind of team. Let's say it's really cold. It's snowy outside. Let's say you decide to go on a 10 minute walk in the cold. You like dress all up. Now, when you come home and you make a hot chocolate and you play a game of Valorant or TFT or whatever, you feel about 500 times better than if you just made that hot chocolate and played that game of Valorant. Like in the heat of the moment, you just want to play. You don't want to go outside. But the, the way your brain rewards you when you like return home, it's like it almost feels, it feels like way better. But the danger zone here is you give up another round to crew, they're up on three, they can start building towards these ultimates very close to it. It's not dry. I'm talking like 10 minutes, dude. And this is if you're telling me you can't fit 10 Levy minutes of that for your own mental King health, Zeno anchoring over towards a tackle, then stop watching a talking banana because I just spent 10 minutes talking about this. Leave. I Bro, I leave. Sailing over. That's going to clear wine and close. Yeah, so they know nobody's there. Here's the flash play. Up into the clouds. Thinking about it jump spot mazina has been playing there a lot king close to the corner when people call you nerds who never leave the house in your unrated games because you're using lineups because i told you to do it for the clip i want them to be wrong okay they better be wrong if they're right that's fucked up didn't end up burning his dash in that situation it wasn't a full attempt at an a hit that got stifled they were just prodding it out and seeing if they could bait out defensive utility they didn't get the paranoia out of mazino no nade forced out from king so not a particularly successful pump fake, but there's still 40 seconds left. Yeah. A lot of this could come down to whether Mazzino gets a kill. Great start, but he's paranoid. Tries to reposition as well. Smokes. 30 seconds hiding left. everything, but deep into the sights. Kesnit. Dude. 
away from the rest of his team. Door needs to be I'm just like looking at this game. No players have left falling. Crew is attacking. Holy. So Leviathan's doing a flood. And oh my god, what a jump. Just dodging it, spotting it out to three, two, Overall, the point of the flood is to not give the defenders enough time to coordinate because players of this caliber will coordinate very quickly. And so the moment the bomb's getting like planted, they're sofa ulting and flooding out. As you saw, they got a lot of scrappy fights, which is good. It's sort of what you want. What's this emo? That's the boss doing sit-ups. Like because I played the boss today in TFT and I top forward. We're not here for it, sadly. Don't worry. Well, that's a great retake. I will basically be streaming TFT every Sunday for the foreseeable future. I'm hopelessly hooked on the game right now. Put it into perspective of the economy once more. It's oh, he saw the he saw the barrel. He didn't notice. Yeah, I let I want to play a style of TFT that most streamers are unwilling to play and still reach the top ranks. I want to always make the fun choice on the augments. I don't always pick like the fun augment. Like whatever's the most fun to watch. And still hit like masters. I think I can. Whoa, that right click was like a millisecond early. If it was even like a second later, he gets silenced. Ooh. And that's a frantic round on both sides, but many questions right being here. posed there by crew. Right I think the reactive play down mid is excellent from Kesney. He gets so deep there, and King is in a spot. Just a PSA to people watching at home, in case you're like, I don't know, you're lazy on the TV and your remote's across the room. Within the next 10 minutes, you're, you're going to want to get that remote. Because the watch party is going to shrink a bit. I need to start warming up in about 10 minutes for Premiere. Or else, like, I don't, I wouldn't feel like I'm doing my due diligence to my team. I will still have the game up. Well, it won't be full screen. And so if you're super invested in the outcome of this game, you're going to want to prepare to tune out. Appreciate you. Had drilled discipline into their players to stick to the game plan, stick to the protocols. It ended up biting them. Valen was talking about it. Two, three, gel win. So I fixed the bot, Pavel. Now I have to reboot the bot. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but everyone plays the same so, positions, or at least. Did apologies. The Viper. Ideally, it would have been now because I would have fixed it after game one. Yeah, don't set out the paper. But I <laughs> fixed it after <laughs> game two because I walked my dogs. Playing this exact same composition. And Levitan wrote the playbook on a lot of it. And now we're seeing them mix things up. You invested in Premier Game? Tom! No, 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 Tom, Tom. I, I forbid you. I forbid you. You're watching your own region compete. You're not allowed to watch me play Premier. My Premier will be a... There'll be a VOD of it. Go watch the VOD. This is... This is more exciting. You know, copy a lot of the defensive setups. They are solid, but they became too predictable. But now we're seeing it just enough in terms of it being mixed up. The adaptability, it's fluid. And three out of four of their rounds are retakes. Something that was fantastic for them over towards Pearl. I and mean, they were almost immaculate on that. I think they won five out of six of their retakes. You have no love for the teams playing? Oh, okay. Damn, that's cold. Use a lockdown to try and clear out the sides, but... I'm telling, I'm telling crew you said that. Crew up, and even if he did use it, there's plenty of tools left for Lev to try and use as well. 
to get rid of it now. It's another swap up, and I'm looking at Noswa with his Hunter's Fury. He's going to have a great line to try and put a lot of pressure on these guys. If they decide that they're going there to push, here it comes. Let's it rip all the way through. Up trap, isn't it? Avoiding it. The bursts now firing off, but really no. Pavel's actually just a champion are. for the non-tier threes to get their piece. Of uh, Papa PP, you can set it to sub chat only mode now to allow everyone to talk. In uh, honor of Pavel requesting tier three jail on repeat. Because we're gonna go tier three chat anyways when I start premiere. Right through the walls while the wall back kills. That goes forward. And so learning, I mean, just like that, the defense. He's one eight. He's swinging. What? Kesnit. Bro, he's cut off the ball. Who does that, dude? Screen. One HP? Care how much health he has. I mean, willing to take these fights. Now, Mazzino, he TP'd into the back of the side. So much more to do in that scenario. Committing the ultimate to shore it up. I feel like Papa B didn't hear me. MP, you can do it too. The command is just slash mod set chat mode. And then just pick the one called sub chat and hit enter. Happy to take the duel. And it's the two. Big star players for either team. It's not necessarily tackle Ooh. fighting against Kesnit, but it was Kesnit there taking the duel against King. King stood or Pen Flash. Pen Flash is here. Down, the star entry Any of you can do it. I can't do it because my hands are greasy. I'm eating. On his team. A one -two you think he did it? Okay. It takes a little bit, and then everyone should be able to type. But Leviathan decided to go in a different direction in the off season. And then Kesnit manages to take down Takalia. Finally brought down that one HP reduced to zero. But it's I'm a hero. <laughs> it's so tough to tell how many rounds crew actually need here on the attack side for us to consider it a good half. I mean, already they're winning. Yo, what's up, tier twos and tier ones? Good mornings, I believe, were just recently handed out. So if you had over five good mornings this week, or five or more, welcome. Enjoy your free subscription. I appreciate you. There's so many unknowns on the scent. Don't know what to expect. The reason why you won't review Vaza aren't 16 by 9 ratio. Bro, reread the rules. Time this guy out. He's showering the pool. I literally will review stretched. Chill. I just don't want black bars when I full screen the thing. No problem with you playing on stretch. Real danger of this one. There it is. Flash I just need you to make sure that you export the VOD in a consumable format for people with a 16 by 9 monitor for content's sake. That's it. To try and take a fight as well to try Peace. and help him escape, but he ends up paying for it. Isn't that always the way your teammate gets in danger? You die trying to bail him out. Another pop last play. Reactions are good and clean, but there it is. The Phantom Spam Mazzino. Oh, dude, crew already has four. I'm already counting this round. Maybe I shouldn't. There's one kill, but still two players remaining. Kesnit is looking to reposition here. You already got him. It's messed up. If you make a mob mill, you better make sure that you mention Imperial was the monster who timed you out. You do no delay premiere for 2-3. I decided against it just because... What's the point? I'm not going to interact with chat. Almost being able to pull it away. But this entire round was about trying to bail out Takulia. They knew that Takulia was playing in close mid. They yeah, Enzo, no, it's an easy problem to fix. As they audibly call for that play to happen. You don't even have to re-encode your video if you record correctly. We spam sheesh when you whiffed two op shots last time. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, the first one on a fully blind target. That was that was some good shit. You doing anything special for this premiere? So we weren't expecting competition to be this tough. I'm not gonna lie. When we played groups last time, it was we cooked on five duelists. So people are showing up. Maybe we got unlucky, but I think people are showing up. So we kind of have to take the L on bind. We're not prepped. We didn't have enough in our playbook to really attack a team of that caliber. Um, so we're going to prep our next map. But bind tonight, we're really just going to go at it with heck and high spirits and big egos. And we'll see what happens. Your aggression. Uh, the team last night, you can't beat a team like that with solo queue. We were bringing solo queue to the table, which is a, essentially adapt to the major issues in their play. But there were no major issues in their play. We had to, we needed some dry runs. We needed some actual like creative hits. And we didn't have any of those because we didn't prep any. 
but crew look right here is what it is for everything and happy to just slow the round down yeah. when they're getting pressured who is this crew i mean the crew during the regular season would have been trying to react quickly pop into places kesnit flying off into the distance leaving the rest of his team behind the squad is now excellent at just being able to hold space damn dude crew is kind of sick yeah we'll see if it was kind of noise or if it's going to be that's the level we have to step up to we have to step up to that level dude we might be in trouble it, that team has that team has hours they probably played together quite a bit of course it's going to be on the jet players that jet head to head in this matchup but i mean special mention to players like klaus i think sitting at 10 and 6 so far on this map uh, th this man has had just such a resurgence off the back of it he was looking at done and dusted man done yeah. and dusted at the end of the regular Yo, season. peace out live at first the numbers not really earning you know the spot on the roster it sounds you know it sounds to be honest harsh, i thought latem was bad at valorant but crew is good this kind of um have you heard of this team really uh called play. loud yeah, you heard of them chance. that's what this is all about last chance qualify my god of crew been running with it they certainly have i mean if they're you know number one seed in na uh world champions winnable for either squad but from brazil sean that said it on the desk this morning it could be the greatest redemption run of all time a team going zero and nine in the regular season and then winning lcq i want to see egan's team tier list i bet you this guy's tier list of pro teams is as follows sentinels 100 thieves nrg cloud nine eg that's probably how this guy rates teams like the from best to worst You have to be living under a rock to think Latem is bad at Valorant. Does Brazil count as Latem? What? As opposed to what? These three players over on this side of the map, unable to really do too much. Now they're going to start to rotate as the drone comes through. But it could be a little too late. Lockdown for a lockdown, though. There is ults to clear this. Hunter's Fury is going to be utilized. Going to clear that one up. So the region by itself? Huh? Nothing to break the opposite side of it, though. But they will just use the guns, rifles, spamming down that angle. Melza, he's the first to fall. They finally get themselves. Pretty sure Brazilians are Latin Americans. These close-up positions planned. Not to get off. No smoke for spawn. You got to be careful. The positioning, though, is quite nice here. And Davies is going to make sure that there is no retaking. No, 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 no. Axe play. Axe play. Hear me out. I'm not out here saying like, wow, Illinois players are good. NA servers are broken up across six different servers. Hell, APAC is split across six servers and they're all unplayable for each other. Like Singapore and Australia. Like these players can't play with each other. They're so far apart. But they're just called APAC. Love them. Time has run too short. King realizes it. He cannot win the round. Gonna get out and save the rifle. Crew. Yeah, I know you have a BR account. Can only keep Brazil. It's the same for the Koreans, though. Like they have their own region. But they just get roped in. With Asia Pacific. Brazil is not its own region when it comes to Valorant competitive seating. There's. With a recon dart, wondering whether or not he should be trying to take fights or what he should be going for. And he's just taking the nice There's like a limited number of seats per region, and Brazil doesn't get dedicated seats. So therefore, they are not a unique region when it comes to Valorant. It takes them so long to root him out of that spot that they're much weaker on the attempt getting into the site and pressure in the rest of his team. And Brazil has to earn their seats from the Latam and NA pool. He's had that resurgence, rejuvenation. And deeper and deeper and here it is the final hurdle of lcq cat round no longer. <coughs> <laughs> looking like a shark out there <coughs> yeah <coughs> i'm not gonna be coming into this one with any Ooh. semblance of disrespect like a different team taco <coughs> wide oh my lines, god but it's Kesner who brings him down. i swallowed my lemonade the wrong way <coughs> Pick. They oh really? At tier two, it is broken down that way. That's that's so weird to me. Oh my god. Oh. They need information, so King flashes out into Catwalk. 
but that also tells crew which is it so weird because you call like EU their own region <laughs> but it's like 50 countries I know it's not 50 relax excellent calling out here and importantly risks being taken the right risks it is a risk to walk in there you have to be sure that your read is correct and here we but go. it is the space is given up Matino trying to weave in Ooh. and out the smoke that he placed prior but only the one King such a wide swing Melzer spots it does he seek to try and take the fight alone no he waits for his team as well Settling themselves here. Deep dark on the back. No one actually dealing with this one, but Shy. God almighty. Ooh. He's the one who falls. That's an exit right through the wall. Yeah, I mean, he's lit up by the, the drone. There's nothing he can do about that. <clears throat> and forced to save. And there was two rounds left. Whittled it down to just one. And <clears throat> Brazil is like, <laughs> it's like Europe in size and population. Whoa, really? 37 to 4. And while we that, have my knowledge of geography is giga flawed. These last few rounds, I think the last four. They've just fallen back to their classic defensive hold. We haven't seen them try to get aggressive. We haven't really seen them mix things up. Putting the silver over towards A, putting Shy there. They're just trying to make their classic setup work. And crew are reading them completely. Every piece of noise that Levy Tan made. 210 million in Brazil? Has a response. Wait, he used that small? And they're just jumping on it. Uh, and crew are playing in such a classic like na style i know that sounds Wait, no, i don't consider that big team, but that's, the North American team that's less than the just us just, I, mean, and I mean that i don't mean that in a derogatory sense i mean that they're just running a default and then calling all okay you had 700 mil wait 450 700 i'm hearing different numbers and it's so adaptable so good Mel's has got the right lead every time just based off info this is a set play yeah deep oh that's a punish into the smoke Bidding his match. The Hunter's Fury is supposed to be the exit. Peace on to that, but it's really... 750? Okay, okay, okay. One tag onto it. Actually, a kill. That adds up. Babies, king facing them. This has turned into an absolute scramble. King with a solo push. Rewarded with two. And here's the response. Here's the reaction. Cancelled. Mazzino was thinking... Wait, 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 wait. ...to be and realized he didn't have the time... I am... ...to try and fight. ...a hundred percent the dumb one here. What the hell is the difference between EU and Europe? Okay, I thought EU stood for Europe. It's the European Union, so that doesn't include what, like, Britain? The UK? Then how come Boaster's an EU player, huh? Shouldn't we call him an a European player? Checkmate, EU. EU's not the best region. It's the UK! I knew it! But we said it before on split. He needs other people to step up around him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're called EMEA. That's true. That's true. <laughs> What's that stand for? Indeed, Brent. Thank you so much. So this is actually Europe, one of the key rounds I thought in Middle the East, Asia. Leviathan in the game, and wait, but they're still no. super strong but on it, this map. Africa, Africa. Wild, okay, I was like, Asia doesn't make any sense of the site. So you can see crew has positioned themselves for this a take kesnet dashed in that makes sense. into the cloud burst and a paranoia actually forces the omen out of the site now as we fast forward a little bit here i'm gonna <coughs> okay 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 i'm going to the bathroom washing my hands i'll be right so back enjoy sean he's good spawn and right now this sova nazar is actually shooting a dart all the way across the map that's going to end up popping right here by the boxes at a main and watch the timing of all of this util. It is incredible. So right here. So the Omen Paranoia is cutting through the site right now. As Taco, you can see he's about to cloudburst the ground and the site box. So that way he can dash between the two, creating a lot of space. King is running out of heaven with his flash. And there will also be a molly thrown on the jump up box by Shy. So watch the speed of this it's insane the paranoia makes everyone on crew unable to break the dart the dart gets multiple pings taco dashes into create space 
Then at this point, the round breaks down to a three on Who three. Who says better lineups? Double peak onto the hell position is truly incredible. <laughs> I've, I've only invented one lineup. And again, for the okay, well, one useful round, one. King and Shy playing I got some brimstone smoke lineups that I also invented, again. I guess. This just goes to show Leviathan, even though this is their perma band right now, they are still insanely strong on this map. And the fact that it's five... The Phoenix right Molly is the only useful one, yeah. And I can't even throw it. I, I couldn't even get Johnny PK to figure out how to throw it consistently. I'm crying. I've got to go find a better one. I feel like Leviathan had some great ideas. All right, all right. If you're enjoying the watch party, we will pay out the winner on this stream. But I literally need to warm up for Premiere. an incredible breakdown of it there. I'm glad that he pointed out this next pistol. I'm going to raid, even though I'm going to go live, like, right away again. So you guys just wait at Brad's stream for roughly... So we'll send you Zetal, because I'm going to be playing Premiere with him. Highly recommend TMV, the watch party. I'm going to be live for Premiere in two minutes. I'm just setting delay, and I'm clicking go live. So there'll be... You'll literally see this. There'll be no change. See you in two minutes. Even the alarm bot as well committed this. Might actually do some damage now. Broken. 